Hey guys, here we have a continuation of yesterday's trial. This is part two, where mom took dad to court to say that he shouldn't have any visitation whatsoever. But we've yet to heard, hear any testimony that he's done anything wrong that would warrant that. If you like true crime, don't forget to check out my true crime channel, Mom's Murder Madness. And let's get started. From you, so we have to have you raise your right hand, be sworn in, then we'll proceed. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Yeah. Go ahead, Ms. McNiff. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Smith, are you Jacob Smith's mother? I am. And do you currently work? Uh, no, I do not. Are you retired? I am. Um, what, what did you do before you retired? So um, I worked uh, as an HR um, benefits coordinator. I uh, processed payroll for um, a company with over 150 employees, and I maintained that position for 35 years. And when did you retire? Uh, January of 2021. And why did you retire? Um, well, so in the beginning, um, when I started watching, watching Asher, uh, I was juggling both my full-time job and watching Asher at the same time. Uh, my employer was uh, willing to let me do that since it was through the COVID uh, time frame and um, but as uh, you know I watched that I did that for about eight months and I just felt like it was my calling and and fair to my employer that uh, I choose one or the other and so I chose um, to retire eight years early to be able to take care of um, my my grandson and what were the hours that you took care of Asher and how many days a week um, Monday through Friday, um, typically it was like a 4.30, or I mean, excuse me, 12.30 to uh, 5 o'clock. And did did uh, your son ever come home early? Um, did he come home early? Before 5. Oh, yeah, sometimes. I mean, his schedule was very flex. I mean, sometimes some days were busier than others for him. And when when the children were born, uh, your your two grandchildren with with Jacob, did uh, you purchase any furniture or or clothing or baby supplies for your son? All and for myself? Yeah, all the time. I mean, I loved um, shopping for them for clothes. Um, I bought winter coats one year for them, um, shoes, sandals, Crocs. I mean, I I did a lot for them. I know when. When um, we found out that Megan and Jake were having a baby, we were also super excited. And um, my daughter and I, we offered to do a baby shower for her. Um, she really didn't like um, think it was necessary because she had all the other stuff from her first um, child. So she still had the major items. Um, but we ended up doing a little baby shower for her for just to give her some extra clothes. And I did purchase, uh, what was it, a Mama Roo, uh, kind of a little gentle um, swing kind of vibrator thing for infants. So these weren't things necessarily that they needed, but things that you were happy to provide? Um, I think it was, a, yeah, it, it, I was just happy to provide. I was happy to contribute and and, yeah. Have you ever argued with your son about his drinking? I have never argued with my son about drinking. Have you ever expressed concerns to him about that he's drinking too much? Never. Have you ever observed your son passed out on your couch uh, in either 2022 or 2023 due to drinking too much? Um, I don't believe that it was due to passing out. I, if I re remember incorrectly, we were out on the boat all day. And I mean, the sun and the wind. And if I recall, I think he had a long work day before. Um, and so it just kind of took it out of him. And so, yeah, I think he did come in and lay down and rest. But he came, I mean, we he came back out and we, 
we continued our, our uh, family outing. Do you, do you remember there being any conflict with him and Ms. Wenzel that, that day? I don't recall anything happening. And, and, and you didn't confront him about his use of alcohol that day? No, I did not. Did you, uh, did you go to soccer yesterday? I did. Yes. And did you uh, observe your son coaching? Yes, I did. Did you at any time see your son get frustrated with any of the, the children yesterday? No. Is there a child named Douglas who was there? Yes. Did, was Douglas having any behavioral issues? Yeah, so this practice, I think, was the first practice that um, Douglas and Asher were, like, on the same team. Like, when practice is, my uh, the other coach, my sister, um, takes part of the boys and Jake takes the other part. And so this practice uh, went yesterday was the first time that Asher and, and Douglas were on the same end of the field practicing together. I think they feed off of one another. I think they goof around and they play and they're not really paying attention to what the coaching that that my son was doing. Uh, but I did notice that um, Jacob gets down on his knees so that he's at the level of the kids. So when he's coaching, he's uh, not like towering over them. And I really like that about, about that. And so at that point when he was knelt down, Douglas was like behind Jake, kind of like tapping on his back, just kind of um, goofing around kind of thing. But when, when my son stood up, because he's in the middle of the scrimmage game and he's trying to concentrate and, and you know, guide the boys in the direction that they need to go, um, Douglas kind of latched on to my son's arm. And so my son was kind of like carrying him along with him uh, gently, not, uh, you know, to hurt him at all. But he, he was trying to get um, Douglas to get more involved in the game trying to get his mind, you know, more situated towards what was going on with the scrimmage game. So he was struggling a little bit with that attachment on him. Um, and I, I noticed it for a little bit. Um, and then I decided to, uh, well, let me, let me, before I say that, he, so as Jake got um, him loose from his arm and got him kind of engaged in the game again, um, Douglas kind of snuck behind Jake. Jake didn't see him. And so I think he had his, uh, maybe his shirt. He was, Douglas was hanging on to, um, Jacob's shirt or his pants or something. And so when, when Jacob went to walk forward, um, he was still hanging on and Douglas fell. And, um, that, in turn caused uh, Megan to go out onto the field and just make sure that Douglas was okay. Did, did Jacob seem frustrated by Douglas at any point? No, not at all. And did you have, you, did you have any conflict uh, with Megan at, at the soccer practice yesterday? Um, I don't see it as a conflict, but I know that she didn't um, take it very well, but um, the boys had a water break, and so they were sent off the field, and Asher came over to get a drink of water um, that I had for him, and uh, he, he asked for a snack, too. Asher asked for a snack, and I was just trying to let – I was really wanting a, um, Megan to know because I don't think she realized that and I was talking to Asher. He said, hey, Asher, you know, you've already had two um, Nutrigrain bars and a packet of applesauce. So I just didn't want him eating too much and then going back out on the field with to get sick kind of thing. And she said, you already have one. I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I, I can hear. Um, sorry. That's all even though. Yeah. I think she's muted, but you're not muted. Um. So she, so Megan, in turn, she kind of nodded at me and just said that she's got this kind of handled. And then she proceeded to tell Asher that he could have the other Nutrigrain bar that she was providing for him. 
Were you trying to undermine her as a parent? In any not way? at all. Not at all. And I did not respond. Um, she is the mother and she has the say so of, over that. But I was just doing it just to let her know that he had already had quite a bit beforehand. But absolutely, I, I would not, you know, overrule her decision to let him have something else. How, how would you characterize your relationship with Ms. Wenzel? Um, I, we have had the best relationship um, from the moment we met. Um, I just took to her and um, my whole family welcomed her in and we were so excited for the future of her and Jake. Um, <laughs> it saddens me really that we're at this point. I feel like the whole Wenzel family and the Smith family got along very well in many different uh, combined um, gatherings. Um, I'm, I'm saddened. It's heartbreaking for me to have to go through this and, and, ha and have that broken relationship with her now. How, how old was Asher when you began taking care, care, care of him? Um, he was three months old. And prior to you taking care of him, was um, Ms. Wenzel on on maternity leave? I believe so, but uh, I think she. I'm not. I'm not really certain. I think she went back to work for a while, but because uh, she, she saved some of her maternity time for later. I mean, I'm not quite sure, but did she work outside the home, or did she have a remote job? So yeah, COVID, I believe, took her home. She's always been remote since the time I started watching Asher. Did you take care of Noah? I did. And how old was Noah approximately? Was it before yeah. or after Asher was born? Uh, no, it was, it was uh, probably the first time was just shortly after I started watching um, Asher. And at some point, did you start taking care of Samuel? Yeah, Sam came to me when he was six months old. So September of 2022. Uh, did you have any behavioral issues with Noah? Um, you know, Noah struggles a little bit with behavior. Um, there were a few times that it got a little bit crazy for me, but I mean, I'm able to like um, kind of deter and, and put his mind on something else. We had lots of things that he enjoyed doing here and I had a playroom full of stuff. So I, I felt like I could get it under control rather quickly, but yeah, sometimes it was very demanding to have the, the younger kids with him just, but and for the most part, it was good. What, um... Did you charge your son and Ms. Wenzel for providing childcare? No, I never charged them. I felt like it was something um, helpful for both of them to not have that expense. Were there ever times when you couldn't care for the children due to commitments that you had? Yeah, um, they were very minimal. Um, I can recall one doctor's appointment for sure, maybe two doctor's appointments. Uh, I had two days that I did take the boys home um, at 3.50. Um, Megan and I had communicated that and everything was fine with that. She was okay with it, but I did have a nail appointment. Uh, and I only recall one date, but I don't know what the other date is. And then Vacation time, I had like a total of 11 days sp spun out between the three years that I watched them. So in Ms. Wenzel's answer to our motion for temporary custody, she indicated that you watched the children from 1230 to 4 p.m. when you were not on vacation or at hair and nail appointments. Do you yeah, think that I... was a regular issue? Well, first of all, I, I feel so disrespected by that statement. I'm so surprised that she would say that um, just because of our great relationship that we've always had. Um, but 
it's it's just not true. Um, I it's just not true. Okay. After your son and Ms. Wenzel separated, did Ms. Wenzel contact you to see if you would continue taking care of the children as you had before? So after they separated, yes. Um, it was the morning of July 5th because uh, I, and and I thought- 2023? 2023, yes. Um, she had texted me in the morning and asked me if I was still available to watch the boys. I kind of thought it was more in the respect that it was the holiday weekend and, and did you, you know, did you have plans or did you not have plans kind of thing. Um, and in the same text message, I also um, just told her how much we missed her and the boys for our annual 4th of July um, boat parade that we had been doing for the last couple of years with the boys. It's just a fun event. And uh, we, we missed them. We missed having them. So in her pleading, she indicated that you were unresponsive to her about caring for the children. Do you agree that you were unresponsive? I have, I have always answered her text messages, her phone calls. I have done it in a timely manner. I have never not responded to her. After the party separated, were you willing to continue to take care of the children? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, in conversations what we had with one another, Megan, her mom, Jake, and I all together, we felt that it was in the best interest of the kids to keep them on their normal routine. Um, just so that they're not trying to figure out what's what's going on and why why you know why can't I see my grandma why can't I you know like they had always known how how did it affect you when well let me stop so at some point did the boys stop coming to you for care yes so July fifth I watched them. Um, July 6th, they came on normal schedule, but on July 7th, they were a no-show. Like they, there was no call, there was no text, there was no communication whatsoever with me. And it got to be about one o'clock, a little shortly after one that day. And I ended up calling Megan's mom, Deb, um, because she's the one that normally dropped them off. And I'm like, kind of worried like is everything okay careful. I don't want you to tell me what Deb said that that's going to be hearsay but you can tell me what you oh. did okay sorry um so I I called her to ask her if um the boys were coming and she said no uh that the boys were having and that's and that that's what I was sorry. afraid of okay sorry so, so you called her and, and the boys didn't come right Yes, correct. And did did they did they ever did you reach out to Jacob or to Megan to find out what was going on? Um I believe I called Jacob and let him know that the boys didn't show up. And after uh July seventh, was there any discussion about you resuming that child care for them? We had a meeting, but I don't recall the date. Um, the four of us did to talk about the, the, all the issues really of their break, their, um, when, when Megan asked my son to leave the home, um, that that's, we were trying to get them back together. I mean, I think that's what initially they both wanted to do. Did, did you ever resume the childcare responsibilities? No, they never brought them back, but it was discussed in the meeting. And I think Megan's response was, is that she had to go home and check the calendar that she had quite a few appointments with the boys. Um, but how, how did she that, never called, she how, never called back. Like she said, she was going to, how did you feel about that? Um, quite surprised really. I mean, I, I can't iterate enough. Um, the love that I have for her and the Wenzel family. I mean, it you, just, it saddens me. I'm heartbroken. How, how did you feel about not caring for the children anymore? Um, it was pretty devastating, pretty devastating. It's very, I mean, mm -hmm. I gave up my job 
because it was something I wanted to do, but I love those boys with all my heart. And I, I gave up my livelihood to do it because I wanted to. Are, are you aware that your son is looking for a 50-50 custody schedule? I am. And if he were to be awarded that, are you available to care for the boys? I am. Absolutely. If if your son had to work overtime, could you assist him? Absolutely. If he was on call and, and went to a call, would you be able to assist him? Absolutely. I, I am not doing anything now. I'm home sitting. I, that, they were my life. When do, do you, do you, are you able to spend some time with the grandchildren now? I mean, before soccer started, uh, my husband and I would kind of pop in on Wednesday uh, visits um, that Jake had. Um, we, we tend to felt like um, we were kind of intruding because Jake had such limited time with them that we didn't want to spend too much time there because we wanted him to be able to enjoy the boys himself. Um, and of course, every other weekend we would pop in. Um, we did schedule a few fun things to go do together. Um, but yeah, we, we limit our time. Just, we feel like Jake deserves that time with them. And when you're around, do the boys primarily come to you or to Jake for their basic necessities and care? Um, no, the, the boys are very attentive to their dad. Um, they know that dad's going to take care of them. They, they, they have that. Um, just connection with him and the love with him. He, he's very responsive to their needs. When you were caring for the children, who would normally drop the kids off to you? Um, for the most part, it was Deb Wenzel. Um, occasionally, it was Mike and Deb together. And then occasionally, Sarah would drop them off as well. Um, there were a handful of times that the boys would come separate, like uh, Mike Wenzel would have Noah, um, Deb would have Sam, Sarah would have Asher. And so I had a, like a three car parade into my, you know, in front of my home to drop the boys off. But yeah. Do you know, do you know why there were so many people dropping off the kids? I don't know if they just had busyness going on. I don't know if maybe I I really don't know the reasons. I that and that's fine. If you don't know, it's it's fine to say you don't know. Who would generally pick the kids up at, uh, at the end of the day? So in the beginning, it was kind of fifty fifty with Megan and Jake. Um, it, it could have been either one of them. I think they kind of communicated that on a daily basis. Uh, to see how Jake's schedule was for the day, maybe kind of thing. But it was it was a 50-50 kind of thing. But when Megan's job switched to the four-day, 10-hour um, days, and she had the Mondays off, her time, her work day was longer. So it was from like 7.30 in the morning till 5.30 at night. So at that point in time, Jake was mainly the one that would come and pick them up. Did, did Jacob ever vent to you about problems in his relationship with Ms. Wenzel? Occasionally he would bring it up. I think it, it got to be stressful for him to try to, you know, uh, manage it on his own. So I feel like he was reaching out for a little bit of my advice. Um, of course, it was, it was money all the time. Uh, they they could not come on uh, come to an agreement on money situation. Um, but two, I think a really big part of this is is Noah's behavior uh, at, in their home was um, kind of out of control at times, and I think Megan and and Noah kind of uh, had a hard time. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe Megan had a hard time controlling Noah's behavior. He wouldn't listen to her and do what, you know, what he should do. And so it kind of created a kind of a stressful environment, home life. And 
I think my son was uh, kind of the bunt of it in the respect that when, when Megan would get so stressed out, she would turn it towards Jake and make it uh, make him feel like it was his fault that things were not going um, properly in the home. Did did were did Jake ever tell you that they disagreed about uh, anything regarding their own two children? Um, I don't recall any disagreements with their own children. Do you did Jake ever ever tell you that Megan was upset with uh, his his use of alcohol? Never. Did Megan ever come to you and and express concerns over over Jake's use of alcohol? Um, she, so when she called a meeting, her and I had a, a private meeting, um, after the breakup, um, she uh, first started out the conversation with, I just want to handle this amicably," And I was a little thrown off with that because I didn't really know where that was coming from. But basically the whole conversation was about money and his lack thereof of contributing to the family financials. And she was frustrated and um, felt the stress on her that the bills weren't being paid on time. And um, she had a burden of not being able to make those ends meet kind of thing. <sighs> but in the very end of our conversation, she did mention that Jake had a situation. Uh, it was a New Year's Eve party at her family, uh, her family function on a, um, I don't know where it took place. It was her family function. But this was at a time in 2019 before even the children were born. And I said, I, I didn't recall anything happening. He never shared anything that with me, but that, but could I go home and talk to him about that? And so Jake and I talked about it and um, it really just ended up being um, this uh, mirage of different types of beers that they had brought different, they were like taste, doing a tasting of them all. Everyone in this family function was doing that. And I, it just upset his stomach kind of thing. But Jake went home, he, he, you know, read a story to Noah. I think he put Noah to bed that night and read him a story and um, claimed that uh, he did wake up in the middle of the night and uh, got sick. But I think it was because later we found out that he has a, uh, intolerance to the yeast that is made with. Uh, yeah. are, are these are these things that that you heard from Jacob and from Ms. Wenzel? Uh, Miss Wenzel brought it up to me first, and then I questioned my son about it. And yes, yeah. Was that the only incident with of alcohol use that she brought to your attention? Yes. How um, so when when you see your son now, um, briefly on the weekends and and on Wednesdays. Well, and let me ask, have you had an opportunity uh, recently to spend more time with the kids and, and with Jacob? Um, more time? Have uh, you had any vacations with them? We, uh, Jake did have spring break week with the kids. So yeah, we, that was the first time we had gotten the kids all week long. And yeah, we decided to, to take a spring break trip with them. Yep. Right. And where did you go? We went to Chicago. And uh, did did you um, what did you do in Chicago? Uh, we went to Great Wolf Lodge. Um, we went to the Navy Pier. We went to a children's museum. It was a fun fun weekend. We enjoyed it thoroughly. It was something Jake just so deserved um, that extra time with them. So, how long were you gone? Uh, we left Tuesday of spring break week so it was at the 27th and we got back um early evening on friday okay and you were gone that whole period of time yes now did did jake have to work on that monday he did and where were the kids they came uh they came to my house 
And when did Jake come home at his regular time or was he early? Um, yeah, I think he was right on time. I, yeah. Do you remember what time he got, he got home on Monday? Uh, I'm going to guess four, four o'clock. And while you were on that trip, uh, what did you observe about your son taking care of, of the children? Oh, could you repeat again? I'm sorry. It's okay. While you were on vacation, what did you observe about your son taking care of the kids? Um, I mean, he he took it on by himself. I mean, he's very good at um, taking care of them. He changes their diapers. I mean, he gets their food, their drinks. Um, he interacts with them and just, they had a great time. It was, it was a lot of fun. And were there any behavioral issues that he had to deal with, with the kids? I don't recall any behavioral issues. Did he, <laughs> did he pack all of their things that they needed for the trip? Yep, he did. Yep. And uh, when they were swimming, who, who was in the pool with them? Uh, well, it, it was either my, my husband. I mean, there was always two. So one was with Sam and one was with Asher. So my husband and I both went on the trip. And, um, yeah, we were in t attendance with all the, the pool time, play time. In, in general, what kinds of things do you see your son do with the boys? Uh, I mean, they, I think one of the best funnest things that the kids enjoy is just rolling around on the floor and playing with him and hugging him and just kind of fun wrestling and they just giggle and, and play but uh we have legos there at his house we have blocks we have remote control cars um they have these really cool like little riding cars that they do in the basement um they each have their own um does he, does he make um, meals for them? He does all the cooking. He's a wonderful cook. Mm -hmm. uh, do, um, how, do the, how do the children respond to him? Um, I mean, initially when they first, you know, when I first see them, they're hugging him. They're kissing him. Asher just, like, he just talk, talk, talks. Like, he's talking so fast he can't get it out fast enough. I think he's just trying to catch them up on all the things that maybe dad missed throughout the week. Um, and Sam is just immediately just up, 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 da daddy, up, up, up. He wants to, he wants daddy to pick him up and, and just carry him around. And have you, uh, you, you occasionally see the kids with Ms. Wenzel as well? Uh, so since separation, I, just briefly at some sporting events. Yeah. Before they separated and you would see the kids with um, their mother, what, what did you observe about their relationship? You know, when the, when the boys were younger, I felt like she was very loving and, um, you know, held them and was just really motherly to them when they were very tiny babies. But as they grew uh, up a little bit, I, I didn't really see that kind of um, interaction, the love kind of thing. Not that she didn't have a connection with them and they, you know, they thoroughly enjoy being with their mother. But I just didn't feel that that love connection that she had with them when they were little. When you when they were together, when your, your son and Ms. Wenzel was, were still together and you saw the family together, who would the children primarily go to for for to have their needs met? Like if they wanted a, a cookie or they needed to use the potty or something like that. Uh, are you like are you talking like more like a family gathering, like at my, at my house? Correct. Or well, if you were at their if you were at their house visiting or. Uh, well, well, always my son would prepare the boys' plates of food. Definitely. Um, he would assist them in eating and making sure their sippy cups were full. Um, 
he he put their needs before his own. He he would not he he normally did not eat his dinner until the kids had theirs first. Did you ever have to uh, help out and take care of the kids when Ms. Wenzel would have migraines? Yeah, uh, there were a couple times uh, that she texted me and asked me if I could watch them a little longer. Uh, she had already communicated with Jake and Jake was working late those couple days. And so I, I automatically said, absolutely, I don't mind at all. Um, no problem at all. Uh, I think there were, mm -hmm. yeah. Did you, um, how, so you said that only happened a couple of times? Yeah, I mean, there, and there was a couple of times that uh, she sent her mom back over to pick them up because that she was having a migraine. Um, have you ever um, been around Ms. Wenzel when she had a migraine? She came and picked them up one time after she had had a, a, a bad bout with a, a migraine. I think it was like a couple days that she was down, but that she had come to pick them up. And um, she just looked tired, maybe just like a little exhausted looking, a little withdrawn, maybe not so talkative as she normally would have been. Um, but that she was feeling better and she was hopeful for, you know. Did you ever have to watch Sam um, when Jake Jake was with Asher at a soccer game in Kalamazoo due to uh, Megan having, having a headache? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, I did go to a, a soccer game in Kalamazoo. Yep. And did you pick Sam up there or did I, I think he was our, well, I, Jake brought both of them, but be, because uh, the soccer at, in Kalamazoo requires a parent to be on the field with them caused Jake, you know, cause Jake would need to be on the field with Asher. And so I, uh, I, I, I watched Sam with them, with him as they played on the field. Do you know how long ago that was? Were they still together? Yes, they were still together. Yep. Have you had much contact with Ms. Wenzel's uh, sister, Sarah? Uh, you mean after separation? Correct. Um, we've run into each other, uh, branch gymnastics. Uh, she was there. Uh, Tennis lessons on Wednesday was happening for a while, and she would be there. Have you done any exchanges uh, on either with Jacob or on Jacob's behalf of the children? So when they first separated, and uh, um, Jake stayed here at my home, uh, Sarah would be the primary person to come and pick them up after visit. So on Wednesday nights, she would pick the boys up. And on Sunday evenings, she would pick the boys up as well. So yeah, we, we seen her on those days. Was, was that a cordial relationship? Um, in the beginning, yeah. I mean, I, I would say so, but as time went on, um, I, Personally, myself, I felt like I should just maybe kind of back off a little bit and not like put myself out in front. You know, I just felt like we don't need any confrontation. I didn't want confrontation. So did you and Sarah have any confrontations? We did. Um, so it was at Branch Gymnastics, October. Um We, Jake and I uh, experienced a uh, lack of, of letting us, you know, acknowledge Asher when he was done with his class. Like they were rushing him to get his coat on and to leave. And, and really all, all what Jake and I were trying to do was just kind of give him a high five and tell him what a good job he did. Um, so the next week when we went 
uh, Jake and I thought, well, we'll just get up from our seats a little bit early and just be at the door mm -hmm. when the kids come out and we can just quickly just give them, you know, a good job kind of thing and let them know that we loved him and he did good. And, uh, Sarah kind of rushed behind us like there was something wrong. I mean, this this waiting room is tiny and there's lots of parents and um, the kids are exchanging the new classroom. So kids are coming out. So it got clustered and loud and I did not have my hearing aids in that day. And so I just hear noise. I don't hear someone trying to talk to me. Um, but her tone of her voice uh, was intimidating to the point where I felt threatened by her. I felt I really did feel uh, I wasn't sure what she was going to do kind of thing because she just kind of went hi and have a good night kind of thing. And I just felt like that was just um, so inappropriate and um, like she was kind of just putting me in my place kind of thing to to, to move me on and and not let me have that interaction with Asher. Have you um, have you had any other instances where you felt like Sarah had overstepped? You know, for the just the general um, whole idea of her being the one to come and pick them up, I think is just uh, causing. Um, Jake and Megan to not be able to co-parent them with themselves. I feel like she's always in the middle and creating situation that it just, she doesn't have that emotional touch to this. And so it, it, do, it doesn't affect her. And so she tends to um, release this kind of cold attitude towards us. I did witness her taking pictures of us and videoing us as we were coming out of my uh, place, bringing the boys down. And I just felt like that was very um, uncalled for. Um, does, Sarah, she, does Sarah usually do the exchanges? She always, there's not been a time that Megan has been at any exchange. That, that, you, that you've been to? That I've been, yeah. Okay. Where does Sarah park when she, uh, when she comes to your house to do the exchange uh on the front outside the front door has um have you ever experienced sarah following you there has been some occasions that we have seen her show up to where we're at mm -hmm. would this be after an exchange or independent uh, exchange well one instance was when we had had to take the boys to uh, urgent care. Um, the boys had come to Jacob that weekend, uh, New Year's, it was the New Year's Eve weekend. Uh, so Megan was fully aware that the boys weren't feeling well. And um, we ended up taking them into urgent care just because they weren't doing any better. And we just wanted them to get checked out. But when we were leaving the establishment, uh, Megan was on the side of the building uh, watching us load up the kids in the car. Uh, Megan or Sarah? Uh, Sarah. Did I say Megan? I'm sorry. Sarah was um, parked on the side of the building watching us load up the kids. Uh, she quickly just drove out behind our car and then left the parking lot. Uh, but I... We took the boys home and then I grabbed the, the prescription that needed to be filled and I took it um, down the road to Walgreens and that's when I noticed that she was also there. Did, did you have any discussions with, with, with Megan about that or did you just let it go? I, I just let it go. I, I didn't want any confrontation with Megan because I, 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 I really felt like we, we were going to like get this worked out before it went to this far. When you were on spring break with uh, your son and the boys, did you see your son drink any alcohol? None. None of us drink any alcohol. And did you see, did Asher have any health issues <clears throat> that were going on at that time? Um, I'm going to say yes and no. I mean, Asher has always kind of had a constipation problem for, you know, 
it's just a common occurrence that happens in kids. But um, for this week, uh, Jake was given instructions um, from Megan slash pediatrician on a regimen that they wanted him to follow with um, Muralax being given to him twice a day. And Jacob was very attentive to that and Asher received every dosage that was required. Um, and it was quite evident just because we constantly had to be running Asher back and forth to the bathroom and we had to be changing his pants a little bit more often just because of the, um, re you know, the medicine was working basically. Was there any kind of special diet that Asher needed to be on? Not that I'm aware of. Were you mainly going out to eat on that vacation? Yeah, we, we yeah, we had to. Yep. Okay. What what kinds of food does does Jake order for the the kids when when you're going out to eat? Well, so Great Wolf Lodge, um, they're they have a morning breakfast bu buffet, so it's just uh, everything. They the boys got to go pick out everything that they wanted, and they could eat as much as they wanted. It was just an unlimited. It was a beautiful setup. Um, but yeah, lunchtime was, uh, let's see, what did we do? We did some chicken nuggets and fries and some pizza. And, but dinner time was more of a sit down. We did sit down dinner and the kids love pasta and Asher loves shrimp. And so we did shrimp pastas and linguinis and the full of, I mean, we, I think Sam had a chicken broccoli Alfredo, um, but fresh fruit was always part of it. Are, are you aware of whether uh, Ms. Wenzel is still uh, nursing Sam? Um, I, I, I mean, I didn't think she was, but um, with some uh, events that have happened, she tends to um, try and nurse him at events, but I'm not sure the reasoning for it. And Sam seems to not... I mean, I can see him trying to push away I and mean, she tries to cover up his head with blanket or a coat or whatever. And he's constantly, you know, trying to get out kind of thing. And and is he a good eater of solid food? Uh, Asher, or Sam um, loves food. And, and now that he's talking more, he's able to verbalize what he's wanting and he tells us what he wants to eat. So yeah, he, he enjoys food. When you were on that vacation, did either of the kids um, cry for their mom or have difficulties going to bed without their mom? Never. There was no um, there was no time of crying or asking for mom or yeah. I think just because the boys were just having so much fun, um, you know, I think it was just time that they enjoyed too with their dad. And do you think that your son could handle um, working full time and having the kids 50% of the time? Absolutely. 100%. I have full confidence in him. He is a great father. He is dependable. He is trustworthy. He's fun and humorous. And those boys love him. And he is loving and engaging with them as well. I just think it's just such an important relationship for them both on both sides to have that. Uh, those boys need their father. Other than you, are there other family members available to support Jacob in his care of the kids? Yeah, uh, my daughter, um, who also has two children, um, Aniston is just eight months younger than Asher and, and the two just connect and they have so much fun. And actually Sam was just asking last night when Aniston gets to come over to his house because he wants to take her into his room. Okay. I'm not yeah. going to object that it's hearsay, it's, but. It's sustained. I have no further questions. Okay. Ms. Pazo? Thank you. Ms. Smith, I want to take you back a little bit in regards to your timeline um, of events. You indicated that you retired, I think you said in January of 2021. That is correct. Okay. And Asher was born in January of 2020, correct? Correct. Okay. And 
when you have two other grandchildren, was another one of them born in 2020? Yes. Okay. What time? My my granddaughter was born in September of 2020. Okay. Did you yeah. retire also to take care of your daughter's daughter? Absolutely. Okay. Do you recall that Ms. Wenzel took approximately a four-month maternity leave um, after Asher was born? Like I, like I said in the first statement, I, I know she had maternity time. I don't know what actual time frame that was. I don't know. You indicated that you quit your job because it was your calling and you had to pick between your job and raising your grandchildren. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's your calling to raise your grandchildren? It's my calling to help my my son and what was my future daughter-in-law to be helpful in, in, the, in the cost of child care. Have you ever told Megan that you wanted to help raise these kids because you wanted to redo what you couldn't do with your own? Um, I, we, 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 we talked about this in our, in our meeting that we had. And I was expressing to um, Megan how uh, when I was raising my children and working full time that I did miss out on a, um, some things with them. And, and I felt very blessed to be able to um, retire and spend some extra time with my, my grandchildren. So kind of like a redo. Yeah. Correct? You, know, you know, just to be able to enjoy them. Mm hmm. Okay. You believe that Megan kicked Jake out when they separated? Um, Megan asked Jake to leave. Why? Why did Why did Megan ask Jake to leave? Yeah, do you know? Um, in our meeting, she stated that he had stopped um, making payments to her for mortgage payment, bill payment bill paying utility bills and he had stopped paying those rent and utility bills six months prior to that is that correct uh we didn't talk about that i don't have a time frame on that okay do you have a nursery in your home uh i mean it's a nursery slash playroom yeah but it has a crib and a changing table and toys and yeah when did you um build that in your house um, preparing to take care of the children in 2020. In 2020? 20, yeah, I started watching Asher in, in um, 2020. Okay. Did you build your nursery before Jake and Megan built their nursery? I don't recall. I don't. Do you recall a time when you were watching Asher that Megan kind of stopped having you watch Asher so much? Was there a period of time when she stopped having you watch Asher? What Never. watch Asher? Never. Once you left Asher in a walker for periods of time that created open wounds on his legs, she didn't ask you to stop watching Asher. Uh, those open wounds, she. Those wounds were created from her putting him in a backpack on her back when she would go for her walks. It that wasn't, was it, it wasn't you nothing. keeping him in a walker all day long? Absolutely not. Okay. But she didn't reduce your time during that time either. That's your testimony. Yes. Okay. Now, through your testimony with Attorney McNiff, you kept using the word we. Who's we? I don't know. I don't know what you're referring to. We purchased toys for the boys. We, my husband and I. Okay. And you also said we purchased clothing and toys in the basement for the boys. My husband and I. Okay. Do you purchase these children's clothing? I contribute very significantly. Um, a matter of fact, in June, before uh, they were taken away, I had provided 10 summer outfits each for them. Okay. And I gave them to her. Yeah. 
Okay. And you, did you purchase the, when Jake was moving into his home, did you purchase the clothing for Jake's home in 2023? I, I helped, um, yeah, create, okay. but I had lots of clothes here already for them. Okay. Miss Smith, did you also then purchase the toys for the home at Jake's house? No, I, not all of them. Did you purchase the beds for Jake's house? Um, we did get the bed from, uh, it was a second hand. Yep. Okay. Now, do you recall, I was not involved at the case at the time, but there were some interrogatories requesting copies of receipts and proof of um, things that were purchased for the boys. Do you recall that? Mm. Not really. Jake would have had to fill it out and you guys had to provide documentation as to who was purchasing what for the boys. You don't recall that? I was not part of any paperwork for legal reasons. It's I not your know. handwriting on the answers to interrogatories? Uh, no, I'm confused. At, yeah, I, I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Let me ask you this. Do you recall Attorney McNiff asking you, to, you or Jake to produce receipts for um, documents that or for things that were purchased for the boys? I think we, I mean, I can kind of remember doing something for some pajamas or something. Because um, I, I know and I provided some um, receipts because I had went and bought some special outfits for Asher to, to wear. Um, Jake was trying to get him in a full blast basketball camp and it was indoor and, and I, we didn't have summer clothing. So yeah, I did provide that, I believe. I, I mean, I really don't remember. Okay. And when did Jake move out of Megan's house? Do you recall? Um, I believe she asked him to leave on July 2nd. Of 2023? Yes. Okay. And was there a period of time that they were dating and trying to get back together? Yes. Okay. Pretty much for the whole month of July, they did a lot of things together. Did during that period of time, did Megan reach out to you um, to get answers regarding after Jake moved out? To get answers? To get, um, I don't know, to get answers on about Jake or what was going on and how to help fix things? Well, I mean, with our meeting that we had, just her and I, um, that was one of the things that we had uh, talked about is that that I would get the chance to go home and talk to my son about all of the stuff that she had told me and that I asked her if it would be okay if Jake gave her a call after we spoke. Um, and that happened, but uh, Megan didn't accept the call, didn't take the call from Jake. Did she take calls from you? Um, I don't know that I, oh yes, I did try to call her because she didn't accept the call. And I thought that we had this agreement that, um, that he would give her a call and they could communicate about what, what our meeting was about and what our plan, you know, initially to try to get get them both on the same track. Okay. Now, you indicated that you pop in on occasion on Wednesdays during Jake's parenting time, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Is that every Wednesday? Yes. Okay. And on those every Wednesday, if the boys have tennis or soccer, you attend that as well. Is that correct? I do. And it's actually you who brings, like when Asher had tennis, it was actually you who would bring the racket in. Is that correct for, for Asher? No. Okay. Is it you who brings the snacks? No. Is it you who brings the chairs for Samuel to sit in? Uh, I brought, the only chair I brought was last night for Sam to sit in at the soccer game. That was the only time I brought a chair. Okay. Jake does everything else. He yep. brings Jake, everything else. Yep. Jake carries uh, a black duffel bag, uh, 
a backpack type bag and it's got everything in it. You indicated that there was one time in Kalamazoo that you had to go and help Jake because um, Megan had a migraine. Is that correct? Yes. That was one time, correct? Uh, yep. And when was that? It was nice weather, so I'm going to say April. Uh, let me see. Gosh, when does indoor soccer over there? Twenty-three, April two thousand twenty-two. Maybe twenty twenty-two. I, I really am not positive, but okay. Now, are you present at these exchanges when Jake and Sarah exchanged the kids on Wednesdays? I was when my son was living with me, um, but when he uh, moved into his own home, I yeah, I'm not there for those exchanges. Is that because you leave a half an hour before the exchange takes place? If I leave a half an hour before, um, yeah, I, I I choose to to not be there when uh, the exchange takes place. Okay. But like I said, how about before, on the weekends? Are you there on Fridays when he gets the kids? Um, yeah. Okay. Are you there on Saturdays when he has the kids? Yeah. Okay. Are you there on Sundays when he has the kids? Yeah. Do you spend the night? Um, I did spend the night one night. Uh, my son was not feeling well, so he went to the ER. Okay. When was that? Um, Uh, January. I really don't recall. January, February. One. Do you? How long are you there on Sundays? I mean, it just depends on what we have planned. Uh, there's no really specific time frame. If there's, you're actually around quite a bit when Jake has the kids, aren't you? Um we try to spend as much time with the boys as we can because we don't have a uh, specific time for us to visit with them. Okay. My husband and I do not get to see them otherwise. Okay. If um, at these, let's say at tennis that you attended and it was Jake's parenting time, were you responsible for Samuel? At tennis, was I responsible for Samuel? No. I don't, I, who was, Sam, who was Sam with if his dad was out, or, was Jake being responsible for Samuel or were you responsible for Samuel? At tennis? Yep. Jacob. Okay. Did you ever do anything to prevent the children from going, from Samuel from going down to see his mom? No. You openly allow that to happen? It's not really my place to allow it or not to allow it. Does it bother you that the kids want to go see their mom on dad's parenting time? I mean, I feel like it is Jacob's time and it's very limited. And the boys had just left Megan's house. Um, my son picks them up at four and we're at the uh, tennis lesson at 430. I, I feel like th that time should be Jacob's time. So it does bother you a little bit. It, it does. Okay. Um, you, when Jake picks the children up on those Wednesdays, does he come right to your house? Picks them up on Wednesday from Megan's house. Does he come to my house? Never. Okay. Do you immediately, are you immediately at his house when he picks up the boys on those Wednesdays? Immediately. Within a half an hour, are you at Jake's house? Sure. I, I, and I don't, I don't really, you know, have a time. I don't keep track of a time clock with it. But Do you think the boys are better off with you or better off with Megan? The boys need their mom. Okay. She's a loving mom, isn't she? 
to a certain extent, yes. And it's obvious that these boys love their mother. Is that correct? Yes. They seem to really like being with her. Is that fair to say? Yes. Did you encourage Jacob to file a petition for 50-50 parenting time? I'm sorry, you cut out in the very beginning of your question. I'm sorry. Sometimes my internet kind of laughs. Yeah. I said, did you encourage Jake, Jacob to file this complaint for 50-50 parenting time? No. How early does Jake, Jacob leave for work? I think he leaves like around 6.15. A.M.? Yes. Okay. Now, during spring break, you had the boys actually overnight on that Sunday. Is that correct? Because Jake had to go to work? No. On Monday? No. Jake brought them to my house um, before he went to work. What time did he drop the kids off? I don't I'm I'm gonna say six o'clock I I really don't recall 6 a.m 6 a.m okay is it fair to say that you Sarah Megan Jake all kind of live within like a mile radius of each other that is true now you had the children all day on that Monday. Is that correct? Why Jake was at work? That is true. Were you aware that Megan had asked for four hours of parenting time any time during that week? No, I was not aware. Okay. Do you know when Jake told Megan that he was going to be exercising spring break? No, I do not. And you indicated that you took the children to Chicago for spring break for a couple of days. Is that correct? That is correct. And to Great Wolf Lodge? Correct. Where in Chicago is Great Wolf Lodge? Uh, I believe. Hmm. Is it Gurney? I, I'm not I'm not really sure on the town. Is it Gurney? I'm not. I don't recall. I'm asking you. Is that actually much north of Chicago? Yes. Do you know if Jake told Megan that he was taking the, that you were taking the children out of state? Um, I don't know why you over-exaggerated you, but I, uh, I don't have that information. Are you aware that Megan was actually told you guys were going to be possibly in like Ann Arbor and other day visits? No, I did not know that. On this date and time that you took the, when I say you, I mean you and Jake, okay? You were using the word we, so I can't really say. So the both of you took the children to urgent care in December of 2023 did you guys tell Megan that you were taking them to urgent care prior to you taking them to urgent care? So this was a January. Are you talking about January? Uh, wait, what, what, okay. Yeah. New Year's, it was New Year's Eve weekend. Um, so when Jake picked the boys up, the boys were already sick. So Jacob and Megan had already done their communicating with uh, the issues with their health. Okay. Um, so, I, I, I think Jake was, was constantly in communication with Megan on um, what was going on. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to ask this a different way. Are you aware if Jake told her before the children went to urgent care that he took the children to urgent care? I don't, I don't, rec I don't have that information. No, I do not know. Well, you were with them why they went, correct? I did go with him, yes. Did any time did Jake Jacob say, hey, I probably should tell Megan what's going on? No. I, I, Do you, you think know, that's something that um, 
Megan should have been made aware of if the children were being taken to urgent care? Jake, um, Megan was aware that the boys did not feel good before they left. Um, her okay, Miss Smith, so I understand that the, she was aware that the children didn't feel well. I'm asking you if she was aware that the children were taken to urgent care. They're I, two different I, issues. Well, I, I answered that time. question and I said okay. that I did not know um, what the communication was between Jake and Megan on that issue. Ms. McNiff, did you have an objection? I kind of there was talking over and I didn't catch it. I, I, I thought that that had already been asked and answered, but I think it's done now. Hopefully. It is. And you indicated that Sarah was following you after that urgent care? Yes. And she showed up at the hospital and as well as when you went and got the prescription? I, I'd seen her behind me, yes. Mm -hmm. And you didn't say anything to her, is that correct? No. Is Asher potty trained? Um, he will. He will urinate. He will tell us when he has to go. You know. But as far as a bowel movement. He is not, uh, but I feel like, too, some of that might be just with his constipation issue as well. Um, he's struggling that way. But, yeah, no, he's not completely potty trained. Okay. Is he in a pull-up or a diaper? Pardon? Is he in a pull-up or a diaper? Uh, he's mainly in pull-ups. Yeah, uh, he does have some diapers at Jake's house, but we are, uh, he, Jake has purchased some pull-ups um, because Megan has, has asked him to uh, not put him in diapers anymore. One second, Your Honor. And I'm going to go a little bit outside the scope of your direct, if you don't mind, Miss McNiff, so I don't have to recall her. That's fine. Okay. Or Judge, I hope you don't mind. Uh, if Miss McNiff doesn't uh, object, I don't either. Okay. Um, now, is it my understanding that you attend church? I do. And where do you attend church? Uh, Woodland Church. Thank you. And... After the party separated, did Jacob start attending church with you? Uh, yeah. Does he go every Sunday with you? Not every Sunday, no. Okay. Does he go every Sunday that he has the boys? Yes. And what type of denomination is that? Re what religion is it? Wesleyan. All right. Are you aware that the children were baptized Catholic? Absolutely. I was there for their baptisms. Okay. Are you aware that there, Megan has a strong belief in raising the children Catholic? Uh, I don't know what her um, level of is. I, I know that uh, Jake and Megan attended church at Woodland when they were together. They would, they would come a handful of times and participate in church with, uh, at Woodland. Was that normally for a special event or something you requested them to be at? No, actually, Megan called me a couple of times and uh, asked if it would be okay to join in the, in the service. I said, absolutely. I would love for you guys to come. Are the boys, so the boys go with Jacob and, and I'll say you on his Sundays. Is there a daycare or something there that Sam goes to? Um. Both boys are enrolled in their classrooms. Uh, Jake has tried to uh, um, initiate Sam to, to be able to go into the classroom by himself, but Sam's not really quite ready. Uh, Jake did go in and, and um, sit with him for a few minutes to try and see if he would warm up to the other kids in the, in the classroom, but uh, it was unsuccessful. Uh, Sam wants, just wanted to be with dad, so. Who signed the kids up for that program or those classrooms? So I'm going to say back in 
2020, uh, Jake signed all the boys up. Noah, uh, Asher, Noah and Asher both were signed up at that point. Are you aware of any time that Megan tried to get access to their attendance at Woodland since separation? Are you aware that she tried to get that information? Yes, I am aware. And is it true that you and Jacob were preventing her from getting that information? That is not true. Are you aware that the church had to ask your permission to release the information? Not my permission, but when Jacob originally set up this um, account in 2022, uh, Megan was there and that that was just expected for Jake to do that um, initial signing them up at, at the church. It was nothing to, to keep her off of that list. But you're aware they had to ask Jake's permission in order to give her the information. Um, After separation. Yes. But uh, I, I feel like Megan... Um, could have asked Jake for that information or, you know, kind of communicated a little bit more with that. And I don't think it would have ever been an issue. Are you aware that Jake actually removed Megan from the information and added you to be no. able to access all the information? I did not know that. Okay. If if Jacob was awarded 50 50 parenting time, how much would the children, how much time do you think the children would be with you? I mean, that's kind of a big question. I can't, I can't predict what might be in the future, but I just know that I am available to help him when he needs my help. And if, Megan was available during those periods of time as well. It would be more appropriate that the children were with you during Jake's time instead of with Megan. Appropriate. Um, I don't know. I just feel like from the beginning of these boys coming to, into my care was just something that was, uh, I guess, I ex I just expected that the, I would be a part time caretaker and. Yeah. Part-time or full-time? Part-time in the beginning because Megan's mom would take the boys in the morning and I would get them in the afternoon, but that's when they were together. So um, it, it was just, it worked for all the parties. We all just were in agreement. We never had any issues whatsoever with. Uh, I'm going to rephrase my initial question. If Jake has parents time, you would most likely have them from when he left for work in the morning to when he would get home from work. Is that correct? I mean, I would assume so. I, I don't know what Jake's plan and we haven't really talked about that in, in that depth. But uh, you'd be but you're saying you'd be available to watch them or have them every day. Absolutely. And you would quite actually enjoy that. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. And I'm going to ask it again. You would prefer that they were with you and not Megan during Jake's time, correct? I, I feel like, yeah. I mean, Megan has a full-time job as well. And um, yeah, I, I would enjoy the time with my grandsons. I have no further questions. Okay. Ms. McNiff, any uh, redirect? Um, yeah. Ms. Smith, why do you choose to not be there when the child exchanges take place at your son's home? I just don't want the confrontation. I don't want, I, I'm a, I'm a peacemaker. I, like I said, we've always gotten along with the family and I, I, it is my hope that when all of this is over with, that our families can come together and provide the best life for the boys. And we all work together to, to make, that, um, make that happen. Are the classes that the kids go to at the Woodland Church uh, childcare or are they Sunday school? Um, Sunday school. Do you, so if you, and do you know if the children go to childcare now? 
I don't, I don't know. So you, you don't know where they are when uh, Ms. Wenzel is working? No, I do not know. Would you prefer that the children be with you or be be in in a child care situation, like a licensed child care? I would prefer that they be with me. And do you have any desire to take away t time from Ms. Wenzel? Absolutely not. I, I have no further questions. Okay, thank you. Anything else, uh, Ms. Aizna? Nothing further, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, uh, that concludes your testimony. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. Next witness, uh, Ms. McNiff. And uh, Mr. Smith, take a, a quick bathroom break. Okay, we'll take 10 minutes and then we'll be back. He's drinking a lot of water. Oh, I don't sorry. know what to tell you. Call my client. Okay. Uh, sir, if you would, uh, raise your right hand. We'll have you sworn in and then we'll proceed. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. McNiff. Uh, Jake, how long have you lived there? Since early October 2023. And did you purchase that home? That is correct. And did you provide copies of uh, photos of your home? That's that is correct. And we have already admitted those as our exhibit number two. Is that accurate? That is accurate. And did you take those photos? I did. And I'm handing you those now. And you can tell me what those are photos of. No, show them. Just tell you. Uh, just in, in the order. Uh, a photo of my entryway and the bench where you can sit and take shoes on and put them off in our coat rack. Uh, our remodeled kitchen, uh, kitchen sink, dishwasher, fridge, um, how I keep it. Uh, another angle of the kitchen, uh, same thing. A uh, remodeled half bath uh, with, again, all brand new. I got a picture of myself and the boys. And actually, the way the boys are situated in the picture is like the direction of the room. Like, Asher's on the left, his room's on the left, Sam's on the right, his room's on the right. Um, and then in early stages of Sam's bedroom, which now looks actually quite a bit different, more toys, rug, decorations, and such. Is that a, a, a fair representation of your home? That is, yes. And you keep it as neat and tidy as, as the pictures indicate? That is correct. And so, where do you work? I work for the Canadian National Railroad. And what do you do there? It ranges uh, most of the time I am the track inspector from Climax to South Bend. I cover uh, 56 miles of track. Other times I am the shop foreman out of school craft who would be responsible for maintaining that 56 miles of track. And then very rarely am I a trackman who would be just like the general laborer, a part of that shop with a foreman over him. And there was some testimony earlier about uh, the bumping system due to seniority. It, it, are you currently bumped into a lower uh, a lower job? That is correct. Currently right now I'm the assistant foreman. I uh, was bumped by an individual with higher seniority about a month ago. Does, does that change your pay rate? It does change my pay rate. And how, how often do you go back and forth between a track inspector and foreman? Uh, that usually happens two to three times a year. Uh, it's becoming less the more seniority I get. Guys are tired. You move up the seniority roster, you get bumped less. And what is your what is your current rate of pay? I it's thirty five twenty six I believe an hour. I could be off by just a little bit there. Okay. And do you know what that changes when you're a, tra a track inspector? Track inspectors right now are thirty nine ten an hour. So if you go to uh, I've given you some exhibits, and they are defendants' exhibits. There is a pay stub that is marked as defendants' exhibit B. Correct. And if you can look at that, do you know is that a pay stub from when you were an inspector or from when you were a foreman? Can you tell? I can not, I thought usually, the pay rates is usually on here. Maybe I'm this. Right. I, I, I cannot tell from this one. Do you know in, and you also have a, a W-2? Yes. It's been marked, I believe, as, uh, as Defendant's Exhibit A. Correct. And what was your gross income for 2023? Uh, gross income for 2023 looks like $97,577. In 2023, did you work primarily as an inspector or as a foreman? I would say primarily as the track inspector. And did you have a lot of overtime in 2023? I I would say 2023 was a pretty high year, I think, for overtime. Do you anticipate making approximately the same amount of money? I would approximate that I would be working less overtime. Did, uh, did you uh, have, and if you look at, back at your pay stub, uh, do you pay health insurance for the children? I do. And how much do you pay per pay period for health insurance? Uh, it's roughly $155 a month. Okay. Do you have union dues? I do. And how much are your union dues? Almost $120 a month. And do you have any mandatory withholding for retirement? I do. And how much is your mandatory withholding for retirement? Uh, it's around $350 a month. And... How long have you worked for the railroad? Since June of 2018. And before that, what did you do? I served in the United States Air Force for eight years. What did you do in the Air Force? I was a civil engineer. And did, did you receive an honorable discharge? That is correct. Were you ever disciplined while you were in the military? Not any discipline that would affect the good conduct metal, just, you know, growth, you know, things you can do better, more of like a person-to-person -person counseling, never like a disciplinary. Did you receive any awards while you were in, in, in the military? I did. I received uh, a large handful of awards, actually. I've got a couple achievement medals. I've got probably a handful of Airmen of the Quarter, my... my most distinguished one is probably Airman of the Quarter for the entire U Safety Command. It is an award that only 36 Airmen will receive a year out of 257,000 active duty. Um, that same year, I actually won three out of four of the Airmen of the Quarter for that year. 
Um, and then just the countless other awards and decorations that I received for the deployments and tours that I was on. Why, why did you leave the military? Uh, the deployment rate. Um, and then just the desire to start a family. I knew that deploying every 10 months is not only hard to, you know, even begin a relationship when you're deploying like that, but then to want to build a family and raise kids uh, under those conditions is not something that I wanted to be a part of. And I, I neglected to ask you a question uh, regarding your income. In 2023, did you receive back pay? That is correct. And how much did you receive for back pay? I believe it was roughly $15,000. And is that included on your W-2? Uh, it is. Would, would that be included in the total for your W-2 for 2023? I believe so. I can't tell you. Did you receive that back pay in 2023? I actually believe we received that. I know we received it in January of 2023. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And can you explain what that back pay was for? Our contract was out, uh, was expired. It took, I think, three or four years for us to agree to a new contract. It ended up going all the way to Congress, I believe. And then, so once that contract was finally signed, uh, all of our back pay was pro, you know, rated the, the pay raises we would have received in 2020, 2021, 2022, all those pay raises, that money that we missed out on, we received as back pay once that contract was finally signed. So would that roughly have increased your pay in each of those years by about 5,000? It would be close. I know there were certain years, so I believe there was like a two and a half percent one year, four and a half percent the other year. So there would have been some difference, but in total, yeah, it was 15,000. Okay. Do you currently have any childcare expenses? I do. Um, and child care expenses that you oh. pay through your child support? That's correct. Are, do, are you incurring any child care expenses for when you have the children during your parenting time? I do. Uh, I've paid for all of the kids' activities since the temporary order. I paid for tennis. I pre and, and let me, and let, me okay. let me stop you. Child, so, care, child, child care, not child expenses. A okay. uh, child care. Um, no, I have no child care expenses. If you had the children on an alternating week basis, would you incur any child care expenses? I would not. And, and why is that? Uh, my mother would be available or a family. Uh, that would be willing to watch the kids as they always have at no additional charge cost. When you and the defendant were living together, did you have any child care costs? We did not. And why is that? Both of our parents agreed to basically watch the kids um, it... without charging. I, I know originally, so before Asher, and, before Asher and Sam, I believe Meg did pay her mom a, a rate for watching Noah. Uh, once Asher and Sam, or Asher, came into the picture, her mom said she would feel guilty if she charged us and my mom did not. So it just resulted in neither of them charging us, I guess. And are you currently paying for child care expenses through your child support? I am. And do you know what the cost of the child care for both of the children is per month? I believe it's roughly for each of them, two, around 200 bucks for each of them per, per child. Per, per week? Correct. Okay. So about $400 per week. Is that what you're paying or do, is it your understanding that that's what the cost is? That's what I'm paying. Okay. So the cost is more than that? Yes. And you had the children for spring break this year? That is correct. And did you have a vacation plan? That is correct. Did that plan change at some point? <laughs> it did. Uh, so what, what, what was the original plan? That we were going to go to Great Wolf Lodge um, for the first two days. We were going to visit an aquarium. And then eventually I wanted to take them over to Ann Arbor and I was going to do some day activities with them in Ann Arbor. And when did that change? Uh, so the aquarium that I originally wanted to go to was sold out all weekend. I didn't foresee that happening. I didn't pre-purchase tickets to the aquarium. So we ended up doing the, the, the Children's Museum in Chicago uh, instead of the aquarium. And then I did not end up taking them over to Ann Arbor uh, so that Asher could uh, go to his activity that Saturday instead of going to Ann Arbor. So when did, when did your vacation start? Your spring vacation with the kids? Uh, we left Tuesday, first thing in the morning. And what did you do on that Monday? I, I worked that Monday. And had uh, Ms. Wenzel requested a midweek parenting time visit during during that week? She requested, I believe, also on Monday when I was at work. I believe I received that message. Okay. And did you come back between Tuesday and Friday night to Michigan? I never returned. Or to home? No. And which, did she have an opportunity to see the children when you returned? She saw them. So she had two FaceTime calls with them during the spring break week. And then we seen her on Saturday at Asher's Easter uh events at his school. And, and you advised her that there was going to be an Easter event at the school? That is correct. And we actually also had one planned for the next Sunday, so she would have seen them Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but the information that I got off the website for Woodland had previous year's Easter information still on the website, so it was a miscommunication with an Easter egg hunt on Sunday that never came to fruition. And what was the activity on Saturday? It was a, uh, they had a series of booths set up of different activities for the kids that can earn prizes. There was some face painting. It was uh, like a pie walk. There was just a, a series of activities for the kids to enjoy for Easter to include an ending and an Easter egg hunt. And how long did Ms. Wenzel spend with the children on, on that Saturday? I believe it was roughly th three hours. Okay. Do you are you interested in having a midweek visit required during each of your spring break? When you have it, she would get a midweek. When she has spring break, you would get a midweek. Midweek. I mean, in a perfect world, we could be able to co-parent in such a way that we could enjoy spring break together with the kids. That would be in a perfect world. But if that's not a possibility, then I would want the kids to be able to enjoy a spring break mm -hmm. without having to go to and from. I, I would want that for the kids. Uh, there was there were questions uh, with your sister and her husband regarding um, whether you, you had you and Megan had watched their daughter Aniston before. That's correct. Has had uh, Ms. Wenzel ever watched Aniston by herself? Negative. How how long were you and Ms. Wenzel together? When did you start dating? Uh, we met in middle of July of 2018. I believe our first dates was soon at the end of July, I believe, of 2018. Okay. And when did you start residing together? 
it's also hard to say. I, I know there was a period of like, I would stay the night, I would go home. It, it was always like, are you going to stay tonight? Are you going to go home? When I started permanently residing there and like moved my things in, I believe it was sometime in the spring of 2019. And when did you separate? Uh, July or early July of 2023. What, what caused that separation? Our final conversation uh, was we were basically talking about the wedding. And then she stated to me that, uh, that she cannot see herself marrying somebody that she does not have a joint bank account with. And so she said, if I'm not willing to have a joint bank account, then I need to spend the rest of my time residing in that house, finding alternative living arrangements. And were you unwilling to have a joint bank account? I told her that it's, it's something that I would um, consider in the future. But at this very moment, I, I would prefer not have one. But I told her in the future. But I would. I also told her at that exact same time that I am, I'm willing to come together to find a, a financial agreement that we can both move forward with. And I stated that multiple times. Did you regularly have conflicts about money? We did. And what were those conflicts about? Um, what were those conflicts about? We... Were they just about the bank account or did you have conflicts about other things surrounding finances and money? Yes, everything. So from the mortgage to utilities, there was a there was a disagreement with a payment of on a shed. So she had offered to buy me a shed for Father's Day from Tractor Supply. It was like a $900 shed that would have been just enough to like store the stuff that we needed. Her and her father planned a, you know, found this. I mean, it's a beautiful shed. I, I would imagine it cost it probably fifteen to $20,000 of, of a large unit. I had nothing to do with that planning. Um, it was delivered. Obviously, I was still excited to have it. You know, it stored our equipment. It, it was great. Um, and then she came to me requesting that I give her another $225 a month on top of what I was already trying to pay for the house and utilities. And she actually had told me at that time that if I did not give her another $225, that she could go up to the courthouse the next morning and start collecting more money uh, from me in, in uh, child support if I didn't do that. Did you give her the extra $225? I told her that if I had the extra $225 a month, I'd give it to her, but I simply did not have it. Were you at that time uh, helping with the mortgage? I, I had paid the mortgage starting June 3rd of 2020 to December of 2022. The original agreement was that I would pay everything for a year. That would put us from June 3rd, 2020 to June 3rd, 2021. And when you say you pay everything, what do you mean by everything? That mortgage and utilities for one year. After that year came up, she was consistently and constantly unwilling to change the arrangement. I still continued to pay the mortgage and utilities 24 checks totaling over $25,000. From that time, I tried to come to her multiple, multiple times to find an alternative like financial agreement, whether it be a 50-50. That's what I originally wanted. It made sense. We both split the house and utilities 50-50 and that, you know, everything else kind of works itself out. She was unwilling to do that. She said that if we were going to do 50-50, that we were going to do 50-50 down to the very last piece of paper that we bought. And I just kind of thought that was, it, it, I didn't want to break down every single receipt every time we went somewhere. Were you making a similar income to each other? As far as I understood, I, it was similar. I never 100% knew what she was making. Okay. Did she know what, she, what you were making? She did. She just always had told me that I, she barely makes more than me or something. So she always just mentioned that she just makes just a little bit more. I just never knew what that number was. So did, did you share financial information? Um, honestly, no. There was not a lot of shared financial information between the two of us, to be honest. So in, after that first year, when you agreed to pay all of the mortgage and all of the utilities, mm -hmm. and you said you, you came to her several times talking about it, what, what would happen? How, how would those conversations go? It was just, all, there was always an excuse. She would say, well, I didn't receive the money at the beginning of the month. So until you do it consistently for a year of, of you know, then it's basically not going to stop until I did it exactly to like the day of how she wanted it, I guess. I'm, I'm not really sure. It just kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. Like I said, I have 24 checks that were directly made out to her in a sum of over $25,000. And at some point, did you stop paying her? That's correct. In December of 2022, when I tried to come to her for the last time saying we need to do something different, she again refused. I knew that the house, I mean, I knew we weren't going to like go under, right? Because the house was paid for. It's, in, it's, it's a paid off house. I didn't know what else to do unless I just stopped paying and forced her to come to the table to find an agreement that we could both come to. If, if the house is paid off, why were you paying her payments? From my understanding, basically the payments were just, I, I was always told that the payments were just enough to cover the taxes. Um, I, I, that's as far as I know with the house. You, you know, was, was it your understanding Ms. Wenzel owned the house? It was my understanding, yeah, that the house was owned, I believe, in a trust between the family members. Okay. Did, did you have an understanding of how that worked? Like, like, did she owe money to the family members? For right, so I would pay her and then she would supposedly pay her parents that, that amount of money that I gave her. So were those disagreements about finances or a, a regular occurrence? It went in cycles. Um, we would have an argument over finances. Nothing would really change. Everything would be fine. We would have an argument over finances. It, it was just a constant cycle. Did you disagree about, about anything else? Uh, we disagreed upon uh, during our time together. Correct. When you were together, did you have disagreements about, say, household chores? Yes. With that, um, you know, I always did what I could every single day. I would come, I would get the boys after school, I would bring them home, and I was home the rest of the day trying to accomplish what I could accomplish, whether that be tasks outside of the, doing in the yard work. I would come inside. I knew that the more I got done inside, the happier Mike would be. Like, the, you know, the cleaner the house was, the happier she would be. So, you know, I, I would vacuum, I would cook, I would clean. I, I did everything that I could possibly do every single day just to try, I, just because I knew that's what kept the peace. And, and did it keep the peace? Sometimes, most of the time, but other times, um, you know, I wouldn't vacuum the way, like, I have to vacuum from outside in. If you don't vacuum from outside in, then she would say that if, if you're not going to do it the right way, you might as well not do it all because I'm going to have to come around and do it, you know, behind you. If I did the dishes and left water spots on the sink, I, you know, basically don't do the dishes if you're not going to clean up after, you know, the, the water. Um, and that was actually, we broke up in, I believe, July of 2020 for that very instance. I did a whole bunch of yard work. I came inside, I, I vacuumed, I did the dishes, and then she made a comment to me in the hallway about water spots around the sink. And I came to her and I said, you know, I don't, I feel kind of disrespected of everything that I've done. Um, and I just really didn't appreciate her comments. That was near the end of the day at that point. We had went upstairs to get ready for bed. She had been upstairs before me. She was sitting Indian style in the middle of the bed. I remember it. I walked in front. I leaned over the front of the bed. 
And she's like, you're upset, aren't you? I was like, yeah, I feel disrespected that I've done all these things. And then your comment that you're going to make to me is about water spots around the sink. And she had stated that basically it's going to, this is how it's going to be. It's going to be my way or the highway. And I basically, I was like, fair enough. So I pretty much went around, went to bed. I woke up that next morning. I didn't say a word to her. I didn't. I got ready for work, went to work. I came home. I packed all my stuff and I left. Did you ever disagree about whether or not household chores were more important than taking care of the children? Yes, there was a time. Um, when I came inside, Sam was, he was kind of crying and then he came over to me and wanted to be picked up. So it was kind of in between the couches near a gate where the divider is for the kitchen. I picked him up. May comes walking in from the back door. I can tell she just got done picking up, I believe, the dog poop from the dog area in the backyard. She walks in and she looks at me and she says, I know you're just not standing there holding a baby right now. As if I, she had already, you know, kind of outlined what she wanted me to do. And she was upset that I'm just standing there holding a baby, I guess, instead of accomplishing the things that I could be accomplishing. And what, what did you think was more important? Attending to my crying son and not a baby that it was referred to as. Did you, um, did, did you ever have any conflicts um, about, about your ability to keep the house clean? Yeah, so she always... Yeah, she called the upstairs a, a pigsty, I guess. And it was very difficult for me. So I, I would be trying to maintain the rest of the house. The laundry was the most difficult for me. Well, did I get behind that laundry? Absolutely. Because anytime that I would try and do my laundry, I had to time it around with, so hers, her and the kids. So she would, first of all, refuse to do my laundry. So I had to do my own. She wouldn't mix my clothes in. I had to do my own laundry. So, but I also had to do it in a manner that did not interrupt her laundry schedule. So anytime my laundry was in the washer and if she was trying to put a load in, she'd be like, Jake, stop holding the laundry or the washer hostage. There was a time where I had put my clothes in at night before bed and washed them. And I, and I didn't want to wake anybody up by transferring them to the dryer. So I went to work. When I came home from work, my wet clothes were in the middle of the floor so that she could do her laundry. So yeah, there was a lot of times where my laundry did get backed up because it was probably the most difficult for me to navigate from the rest of the household chores. Ms. Wenzel, in her answer to our motion for temporary custody, alleged that you left the master bedroom and the, and the bathroom embarrassingly filthy uh, when, when you left the home. Is that true? It, it's not true. Um, again, there was probably laundry. Um, nothing. There is no chance that it could ever get to the point to embarrassingly filthy. And it, the slightest, you know, she would always say that if it's not perfectly clean this way, that I'm triggering past traumas and that, I, you know, it would never be allowed to get to that point of being embarrassingly filthy. There's just no shot of it. She also alleged in her answer to that motion that your only job in the household when you were together was lawn care. Is that true? Well, I did enjoy doing lawn care a lot of time, or every time, actually. Originally, Noah would ride on the lawnmower with me. He enjoyed doing that. When he got older, Asher hopped on and liked to mow with me. We enjoyed doing lawn work. I did. But that's certainly not the only thing that I did. I did a majority of the cooking. When I cooked, I cleaned up after I, I cooked. When she cooked, I cleaned up after she cooked. Like, that's just how it was. And then I would... Um, I, vacuum, just uh, even if it didn't look like any vacuums, just putting vacuum lines in the rug in our living room, I knew it would make her happy. It just instantly changes her mood. In, in her answer to the motion, she also alleged that you placed trash bags in the basement, the garage shed, the garage and shed, instead of taking them out for garbage pickup. And she included photos. That's true. It is, it, was that true? So it, it is true, but it's so. It was during a period of when we were trying to work things out. I had pulled into the driveway. She was on her way out. She was taking the boys uh, to a trampoline park in Kalamazoo with her friend and her kids. And she told me that I could stick around and get some things done. That was pretty much like the most detail she gave me. So I said, okay, that's fine. Um, I go inside, I start cleaning. I literally cleaned the living room, the kitchen, upstairs. Not like I cleaned the entire house. Um, and then I had texted her. I ran and picked up uh, some dinner and brought it back. And I tried to text. I was like, hey, when are you guys coming back? I can have dinner ready by the time you guys get home. Um, I seen her pulling the driveway a short time later. And luckily, I'd already thrown the dinner in. It still had probably 30 or 40 minutes left to cook. Um, she, not even five, 10 minutes after they got home, she said, Jake, come outside with me. She walks me into the garage and she basically berates me for deciding to clean the house instead of the garage. She said, my time would have been better spent cleaning in here, but I chose to clean the house when she has uh, the cleaning, her hired cleaning lady was coming like the next day. And so she told me that I've not only wasted my time there, but I'm wasting her money by then her having to come basically clean a clean house. And uh, so after that, I go back inside and she said, she sits down on the couch and she looks at me and she says, were you planning on sticking around for dinner? I was like, I, yeah, I mean, I would like to, I, I'm assuming that you're like, I'm not welcome. And she's like, I, I don't know her exact words, but it was basically that she wanted me to leave. So I did. So I got dinner in the oven. I left before it was done. And then I still came back the next day to then clean the garage. Upon cleaning the garage, obviously when you clean the garage, you're taking the trash, you're taking the broken stuff, the you know anything that's not needed to make it a, an organized garage. And I put it in bags. Bags, there's probably four or five bags, I'm not sure. And then I was kicked out again before the, you know, the trash service properly came. So those bags were sitting in that garage for no more than 48 to 72 hours. Okay. Did you ever have conflicts with Ms. Wenzel regarding uh, your, your golf league? Yes, yeah, so that was a topic of discussion that she ultimately uh, thought it would be okay or a good idea that I'd be able to participate in the golf league. She gave me the approval, uh, which sounded great in theory. It's just every time that I would go to golf, I would be getting texts like, when are you done? It's almost done. You know, I would always have to hurry home. And I knew that it, whether it was golf league, a golf tournament, I was not coming home to, you know, it's not like, hey, honey, how was golf? Or hey, it, it was a death stare of like, you better get upstairs, get cleaned up, get changed and get back down here to help me as soon as you can. It, it, it was, I, I paid for it. I was able to do it, but I paid for it. There have been a lot of allegations about uh, alcohol in, in, in your golf bag and alcohol while you're golfing. Did you ever hide alcohol in your in your golf bag? No, I had no reason to hide alcohol at any point during our relationship. I had absolutely zero reason to. We drank together. We had mixed drinks at the house together. There was never a point in time where I felt I needed to or ever hide alcohol. And not only that, when I'm golfing, I'm a three handicap. I play golf to win. I'm a competitive individual. I'm not I'm not the guys out there hooping, hollering, getting wasted to swing and miss. Like I, I'm out there to win. I, I'm, I, that's priority one for me. There are photos that Ms. Wenzel has provided of uh, a golf bag with, with alcohol in it. Do you, do you know what photos I'm, I'm talking about? I do. And do you know how the, the bottles of alcohol got in, in the golf bag or near the golf bag? 
no and i honestly think it's a stage picture because i have the golf clubs that i use for golf and i've had them prior to that so she took my old high school golf bag that had like three clubs in it that's been stored in it and then set some alcohol next to it as if that's like my active golf bag that i take with me it wasn't it's I, it, simple as that I, i've had my golf clubs prior to any of this and what about the little bottles of fireball that she's alleged that she found uh, around the house the only spot that i know that i left those was in my nightstand that is accurate so when we went golfing there was times where you know we didn't eagle on a hole you'd celebrate with little malt liquors and i had those so they would, the empties would be in the golf cart when i return a golf cart i like to clean it out i was a cart boy that was my very first job i appreciated when people cleaned out their cart after they were done with it so i took all my golf tees my golf balls any of the trash and i put it in my pockets and i was hurried home so obviously now i'm hurried home i walk in the door i get the desk there of hurry up get down here and help me so i go upstairs i empty my pockets into my nightstand as quick as i can so in my nightstand was also golf tees golf balls those bottles i wish i would have thrown away i didn't they ended up in my nightstand with receipts just other miscellaneous things i would hurry up jump in the shower get changed and get back downstairs and, and how much would you generally uh, like drink when you were out golfing it, three drinks maximum I, I, and i always had water so it would be you know the hot days and again i'm out there to compete i'm out there to win so i would have water you know the six pack in the back but honestly i don't remember the last time i drank more than two out of the six pack and if we got an eagle on the hole we take a shot but again this is over a five six hour period of time as well did you, do you have any rules for yourself about drinking and driving yes but I, I do i do not drink and drive i'll have two drinks on our last date night i had two drinks i always let myself to that i i forecast out how long i'm gonna be somewhere um even when i went to arizona for my buddy's wedding just this past what year and a half ago now i i had my own rental car i drove it from phoenix to tucson i could have drove my rental car out to meet the guys but I Ubered. I Ubered anywhere that I had the potential that I knew I was going to drink and drive. If I'm going to Uber myself and be responsible for just myself, I assure you I'm going to be responsible when there's more than just me in the car as well. When when you and Ms. Wenzel were together, did you have disagreements about drinking? Um, it, honestly, it was rare. So there was times. I know the, the big one was the New Year's Eve of what it was, 2019, I, I believe it was, that I had went out and purchased, they're, they're like malt beers, they're the expensive ones. It's literally like 20 bucks a beer. And I bought a few of those and different flavors and whatever. I had two of those and maybe like one other beer. And it, I do not believe that I was drunk. I ended up, I, I took no to bed. We read a, uh, he's got like a superhero book. I bought a bunch of superheroes that I found at an antique store. I forget the name of them, but they're like elemental based. So there's like a earth one, fire one, you know, and there's a huge book. It's literally like a 200 page book that tells like the history of all these superheroes. And I read, we read some of that before we went to bed. Um, and then Noah ended up going upstairs with Meg because even when I would try to put him asleep, he usually didn't fall asleep without Meg being next to him. Um, I woke up, I think around 4 a.m. I did get sick from that. And again, I think it's because it was, it was the milky multi beer. I've never drank it. It was something new that I had tried, um, but it didn't change. I mean, I, I ended up getting sick in Noah's bathroom. So I woke up the next morning, went to work. I called Meg and apologized because I was embarrassed by it. it, I, it I didn't think I, I drank to excess, but it's still embarrassing to be puking in your kid's bathroom. I agree. And I just wanted to let her know that, you know, like, hey, I'm sorry. What, were there any other times when you were in bed and you threw up as a result of, of having too much alcohol? No. Did uh, Ms. Wenzel ever ask you to buy alcohol? Yeah, there was two times uh, that she asked me to pick up some rum shot off for her. Um, and then just recently after our, around the same time as our casino date night, she asked me to pick her up a surprise drink, I, you know, or a mixed drink. And I, I told her I surprised her with something. I ended up getting a, a vodka, cranberry, and Sprite, I believe it was. Uh, we picked that up. I made the first one. I tasted it. I was like, I kind of like it better without the cranberry. Handed it to her. She liked it. She drank the whole thing. I didn't have one that night. Uh, but the next night, I did make one in an actual uh, uh, mule. It's a smaller cup. I, had, I made another one in that with it. Uh, but, so, so you said there were times you would drink together at home? It, it, those times were more rare. So we probably made mixed drinks at home maybe I don't know, three times or so over the course of our relationship. But every single date night that we went on, we drank together every single date night. And I drove to and from every single date night. And so did, what did that mean in terms of how much you would drink? I, I never had more than two. And most of the time I actually had, I can't remember. I would say at least half of them, I probably only had one drink. And tell me about that date night in 2023 at the casino. Yeah, so we had... The, was this after you had separated? That is correct. Were you trying to reconcile? Uh, at least explore the option thereof. And and how much did you drink? I had two mixed drinks uh, with dinner. And how much did Ms. Wenzel drink? Well, we pulled into the casino and I uh, got out of the car, walked over, opened her door. I actually got down on one knee and basically reproposed to a new beginning. Um, it, it was kind of a moment for us. And then I stood up and I kissed her. And I said, you've already had a drink, haven't you? Her, her breath, I, and I tasted it. And she just, I think she said something about how you know or something. I was like, I tasted it. Anyways, it was kind of like a laugh. And then we go inside and have dinner. Um, and then at dinner, I ordered a Moscow Mule. I believe I read a Moscow Mule. She had a double shot of whiskey on the rocks. We had dinner, finished our dinner. Um, and then at the, like, the tail end of dinner before the got her plates, we each ordered one more drink. So she ordered another double whiskey on the rocks. Uh, this time, I mean, the first one that he poured, there was like an inch gap at the top of the glass. But this time, I feel like he overpoured it. It was full to the brim. Um, and then we finished those. I finished those shortly after, like, walking around the casino for a minute. And that was my last drink. We walked around, enjoyed the casino. Uh, we finally made our way around to a different bar at the front of the casino. And uh, I ordered her, or we went to the bar. She ordered another uh, double whiskey on the rocks. So we got our third one. Um, so she had at least six shots, even though I think two of them were overboard, but we'll call it six. And then, uh, I didn't order anything that is around the same time. So about the same time she was getting that third drink is when my aunt, Kenzie and Lindsay all were coming up to the bar to order a drink as well. 
And at the end of the night, were, did you feel like you were intoxicated? I did not. It had been at least an hour and a half, two hours, probably by the time I finished my last drink. And did Ms. Wenzel seem intoxicated? I mean, she was intoxicated enough that we drove back. We had originally met at Family Fair. Uh, we parked under the flagpole on like the west side of the building. Uh, we had talked there for a minute. And then uh, there was a point in time where I walked around and opened her door. And we were getting close. And then eventually it was in a position where she was like, her back was on the passenger seat. Her feet were kind of more towards on the ground. And I was laying between her legs and we were making out. And then at one point she asked me if I wanted her. And then I was like, well, do you want to go back to the house? And she thought about it for a minute. She said, no. And then I said, well, can I at least take you home? And she said, no. I said, can I at least follow you home? She said, no. I said, all right, well, at least text me when you get home then. And I'm not sure that she ever texted, but I did end up texting her the next morning asking her how she was feeling after that night. But also to note that that same night, she was also the primary caretaker of our kids that night as well. Did you have concerns about, about that? I did, and I wish I would have made it more of an issue at the time, but I did not. Um, were you hopeful for reconciliation at that point? At that point, it is still, yes. W was there a time when you drank so much that you passed out on your mom's couch? No, it, it was a hot, we're out on the boat all day. Um, we were dancing, we're in a boat parade, and we do it, we've went for eight years in a row. So we put a lot of effort into, you know, dancing and making it entertaining for everybody watching us. Um, so we came upstairs, everyone was hungry. I believe we threw a mac and cheese in the oven. I needed like 40 minutes to cook. The kids were in the toy room playing together. Um, I turned the TV on, the fan on, the AC was blowing, and I lay back on the couch and enjoyed the cooling off of being out in the sun all day. It was nothing to do other than just, it, nothing feels better than AC and a fan after being out in the sun all day. Were there ever times when Ms. Wenzel went drinking with friends and you took care of the children? Yes, she went to uh, St. Joseph with her friends, Ashley and Lindsay, stayed the night there. So I was home taking care of the boys. Um, she, you know, was texting, and I think she might have even called to check in. I told her everything was fine, just to enjoy yourself. Um, they actually took my vehicle, now that I think about it, to St. Joe. Um, um, yeah, I mean, there was no issue, but yeah, she came home the next day, around lunchtime, I believe. Uh, and then there's been other occasions as well. She went out to New Holland with some friends to drink. There's times that her friends would come over just to chat, and then it would turn into, hey, do you mind if I go grab a drink with her? And I always said, yeah, sure, go ahead. I've never once said no to her going out with friends, ever. In, um, in Ms. Wenzel's answer to the motion for temporary custody, she, she alleged that you used a tracking device to track a former girlfriend. Is that true? That is not true. Matter of fact, um, my and my ex-wife actually that I was that we separated in 2010. She actually gave me her wedding ring and engagement ring back before she left the hotel room. Something that I still can't get back from Meg, the engagement ring. Um, we went out to dinner our very last night, ever seeing each other. We wished each other the best. I congratulated her on her new marriage. We left and separated that very amicably, and we've always just wished each other nothing but the best. There was never tracking, never none of that. Have you ever used a tracking device to track Ms. Wenzel? Absolutely not. Did you ever have conflicts with Ms. Wenzel if you had to work late? Yes. So. It always seemed okay at the start. You know, if, if everything was in a perfect world and I got a call and I could be there an hour and get back, even if I have permission, it's fine. But the longer it went on, it's like, when are you going to be home? The more she would get overwhelmed or stressed or whatever's going on. And it would it would become an issue by the time I got home. Um, and then the night shifts were the worst uh, because I'd be working all night. I would come home at 7 a.m. Uh, by the time I got to bed, it's like 8 a.m. And she's, you know, saying she's trying to do her best with the kids. By 11, 30, 12 o'clock, she's coming upstairs. What, are you going to sleep all day? So, you know, here I am getting three and a half, four hours of sleep. She's asking when I'm going to get up to help. It, it was very difficult. It was challenging, but it, it wasn't pleasant by any means. When, when you were together, did you attend her family's events? Every single, at least 98% of them. I'm trying to think of a time where I had to work and I wasn't able to attend an event, but I would certainly have to be reminded of that time because I've been at everything. Did you go to events for her son? All of them. Were there ever times when you attended events with the children for your family and without Ms. Wenzel? That she, that she didn't go to your family events, but you took your children? Um, it... <sighs> I'm struggling to think of a time before we separated that I attended an event without them or without her. Um, all I can think of is just the you know, soccer or Asher soccer when she would have migraines. Um, yeah, all the times, everything else I think was after separation that I can recall. I'd have to be reminded of any others, I guess. Were the, were the migraines often or were they occasional? Her original, she showed me her chart. She would track them. I mean, it was literally like 16 to 20 migraines a month. Some of them lasted two or three days at a time. There's been times where she didn't get off the couch for two days. She's thrown up in a, a, a basket. There's been times that I would have to go get Noah from his visits because she can't get off the couch. Um, uh, yeah, it was frequent. I would, she would have like these little warming bands that would be constantly running, warming up for ice. I, I would search things online. I bought things off Amazon that would try and help with the migraines. You know, I was trying to do what I could when they happened, which was very frequently. Did they eventually improve? Not that I'm aware of, no. When you separated, did you remove yourself from the family calendar? I did not. I was removed from the security system, the family calendar, and something else. All I'm saying, I got all three notifications at the same time on my phone. When, when you were together, how did you divide childcare responsibilities? Um, it was never like anything like consistent written in stone. So. I know oftentimes after dinner, I would take the boys, I would bathe them, I would get, I would try and get Sam out first, and I'd get Sam dried off, diaper, and pajamas, and then I'd bring Sam to her to nurse, and then I'd get Asher ready, uh, you know, out of the tub, put his pajamas on, and then by that time, Sam was usually done nursing, and then I would take both of the boys, per usually their request, I would take them on a little nighttime drive, they loved listening to Coco Melon, it gave Meg time to herself, and then 90% of the time, by the time we did a little loop around Battle Creek, I would usually stop by Chick-fil-A and get Meg a shake, come back home, usually by that time, the boys were asleep, I would carry them into bed, and, you know, it kind of worked out for everybody, that's how night times went, um, otherwise, I mean, we kind of we were able to look and see what needed to be done and we would do it. I mean, there's never, I guess, a, a consistent rhyme or reason. Is, is Ms. Wenzel still nursing Sam? 
So in March of 2023, every time that Sam would want to nurse, Meg would say, oh, you need to start weaning. We need to get this boy to wean. You know, you're, you need, you know, and now all of a sudden, once all this happened, nursing is, you know, she needs to nurse him. She needs to nurse him. She, she nursed Noah for a year. She nursed Asher for a year. She wanted Sam to wean in March of 2023. And now that this is happening, we're dragging it out to now where, you know, Sam is eating with utensils. He used solid food. It's, I feel like it's all for show at this point, but that's my opinion. What, what, what was your relationship like with Noah? Uh, it was, it was good. It was challenging at times, but it was good. Um, from the very first time I, I met, I shouldn't say the very first time, but within you know, the first five times of meeting him, I, I, he had a lot of outbursts for whatever reason. We'd be out and about, and it was hard for us to leave anywhere without him kicking and screaming. Um, I would oftentimes try to step in to, you know, be the one to you know, at least carry him and get him to, a, to the car, which was oftentimes where we were trying to get to in the first place. But in terms of, I mean, I've taken fishing, I've taken him, you know, to the trampoline park, both him and or I just, just took Noah to Comic-Con across the state to Detroit, um, or the Detroit area. Um, I mean, we've done a lot together. We play out together in the yard. We, you know. Did Ms. Wenzel trust you with Noah? Absolutely. That's why she let me take him across state to Comic-Con, not even what, a year and a half ago. She not, she not only trusted me to take him there, she obviously trusted him enough to make it mandatory that I, that Noah come with Asher and Sam even during the visits initially. I was not allowed to see Asher and Sam unless Noah was also present and coming. And not one time did, from anybody that I ever received any type of concern over safety, um, alcohol, nothing, not a single concern this entire time to date. Did you ever talk with Meg about adopting Noah? Twice, at least on two occasions. Um, one time we were sitting at the, the dining room table. We, I think we were kind of discussing um, how to, or not how to, but just the amount of money we could save if we were all under the same healthcare policy. And it was at that time that was kind of triggered to ponder, like if we adopted or if I adopted Noah, that, I know that conversation was brought up at that time. And then there was another time I was by the front door. I figured what, tri what triggered the adoption thing. And it was just like, how do we get Matt to allow it to happen? And, and that is no dad. That is correct. And it was like, we, we could leverage the, you know, the threat of child support. If he doesn't agree to let me adopt him, then you know, we could do that. Or it was just pondering the idea of how we could, how we could get him to let me adopt Noah. Since you've separated and there's been a parenting time order in place, have you had parenting time issues? Since, sorry, say that one time. Since, since you separated and there's been an order for parenting time, have you had uh, any difficulties with, with Ms. Wenzel regarding parenting time? Um, just with parenting time or just like issues in general regarding let, let me let me be more specific has uh has Ms. Wenzel included you as a contact on asher's uh daycare registration or preschool registration no she had originally claimed that she included me on that registration i tried to call and get some information on asher they told me that they could not give me that information without contacting i'm gonna object as anything some third party told him it'd be hearsay okay okay we got what your response um i, I agree okay sustained uh, did, did you at some point um become aware that you were not on the preschool registration that is correct i made a phone call that made me realize that i needed to go into asher's preschool to confirm that i was on his registration upon arriving to his preschool and looking at the paperwork i was not included on the registration they had to provide me that paperwork i put my information on that and i had to provide them a copy of the temporary order and they sent that information at that time to make to let them know that i was added to asher's uh, school do you know whether you were included as a contact on asher's gymnastics registration i was also not included on asher's gymnastics registration not as a parents or emergency contact i also added myself to that as well and did you take Ms. Wenzel off of the Sunday school registration? No, I had not touched that registration since the first day that we all went as a family to Woodland. So when I signed him up in 2020 or whatever that first day is that we went, whatever information I put in 2020 is the same information that was there when she went up to Woodland. And I was approached by Woodland's... Um, and be careful about not talking. Okay. I was... Up, uh, I had to give the okay to Woodland personnel to allow them to send uh, Meg some information regarding the kids, which I said, absolutely, go ahead. Um, did, that, did Ms. Wenzel contact you about that and ask for that information or did somebody else? She did not. Did, did Ms. Wenzel allow you to see the boys initially after you separated, but before there was a temporary order? Very, very infrequently. No. What, what was what was she allowing? It was like Wednesdays from three to six and Sundays from three to six or seven. It was twice a week. And I did you request more time? I did. I told her it wasn't enough time for myself or the boys. Did you ever request a 50-50 schedule? I did multiple times. I told him, I said, I, I it's the most fair thing for the boys and myself so that they see that both their mother and father on an equal basis. Were Were you surprised when she refused you that? Um, I wish I could say I was more surprised, but I knew by that point when she had already ripped the kids out of their normal routine um, that it, it wasn't going to go that way. She claimed that she was doing what was in the best interest and stability of the kids by completely removing them from their father and from their normal routine at, at literally a flip of a switch that I knew that we weren't headed towards a 50-50 that we'd probably be sitting here today. Did, did you, were you surprised by the allegations regarding alcohol? Yes, because we, we, had, we sat down and had a conversation with her mom, my mom, again, trying to remediate this. Alcohol was brought up exactly zero times in that conversation. This alcohol, it, everything has stemmed from me refusing joint bank accounts. And everything after that has been, a, you know, a, an, at least a, a, I don't want to say fabricated because a lot of it is, but it's, she's taken a very small sample of like one day and making it to be repainted of my entire life and our entire relationship. But it's, um, yeah, no. When was the last time you had an alcoholic drink? Uh, it was like uh, September 23rd, 2023. And what did you have? I had half a beer. Uh, actually, here in Marshall, Raylan Edwards came and visited the Copper Kettle, I believe it's called. I had a half a beer at that location. And why have you stopped drinking? 
uh, well, I will elaborate to it. I had half a beer that location because I was working out, you know, taking creatine. Um, I was already dehydrated. So it was like every sip of beer that I took, just, it was uncomfortable. I was already dehydrated. So I just didn't finish it. That's why I didn't only get half. But um, I stopped drinking just based on the principle that someone has effectively used a little bit of alcohol that I have consumed to essentially rip the kids away from me. And, you know, it's just that a principle of this matter that alcohol is not an importance to my life. It's not a problem in my life. And so I have completely eliminated it and refused to ever allow somebody to use it against me ever again. Have you had any issues with Ms. Wenzel being on time for scheduled visits? Yeah. So the visits that landed on Noah's visitation day. Uh, the kids were supposed to arrive at 3 p.m., but Noah was also brought and returned at 3 p.m. at a separate location. So by the time they loaded him up, got him whatever he needed to get, this, that, they were know, 40, 45 minutes late, so they get there at 3.45. And then I'd have to have him fed, bathed, and returned by like 6 p.m. So she provided me just enough time to, you know, do basic necessities and return him, I guess. Ms. Wenzel alleged in her answer to our motion for temporary custody that after you left the home in July of 23 that you had no interest in seeing the children for a couple of weeks. Is that accurate? It's not accurate. It that all stemmed from when she initially ripped the kids out of their normal routine. I knew what her mindset was, and I believe that's when I started making phone calls to, you know, attorneys to try to figure out the next step and what I needed to do. I didn't want to make a knee-jerk reaction and do anything that was going to further compromise the situation. So in her answer, she included several dates that she said were scheduled for visits in, through, in July through September of 23. She says you canceled visits with the, with the kids. Do you remember canceling visits? No, it wasn't a cancellation, but it's a good spinoff of what happened. So I was stuck at work. There was a, Somebody had committed suicide on the tracks. I got hit by a train. I was the inspector at the time. That requires a big investigation and a big uh, inspection at the end of it. So I knew by midday that I was not going to be able to make it home on time to get the kids. So I reached out to Megan and let her know that, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it there. Is it any possibility that I can, you know, we could reschedule for tomorrow? Not a problem. We rescheduled for tomorrow, but now that's been split into a cancellation. It was just agreed upon rescheduling. Yeah, since there's been an order in place, have you missed any visits? No. Do you agree that you were frustrated with uh, the kids at the last soccer practice yesterday? Absolutely not. Do you believe that you can provide the children with parental care? 100%. Discipline? Yes. Love? Yes. Guidance? Yes. Attention? Yes. Are you providing the children with security? Yes. Stability? Absolutely. Permanence? Absolutely. Do you believe that you're bonded to the children? A thousand percent. Do you think that they're bonded to you? A thousand percent. How do you demonstrate love and affection to the children? Hugs, kisses, tell them I'm proud of them. At night we read and I have each kid on each shoulder. You know, if there's any argument at night, it's who gets to lay on dad's chest more. Um, I, I'm just there with them, interacting with them every minute of my time. Do you believe that the children are bonded to their mother? I do. Do you think that it's an equal bond between mom and the kids and you and the kids? I would have a hard time disagreeing. Do you think the children are bonded to any other adults? I do. They're bonded to, yes. Who, who else are they bonded to? Definitely Sarah. And, and why Sarah? Sarah's with the kids, you know, a lot. If Sam hops out of the car and sees Sarah and Meg, he's going to call for Sarah first. I know that he does. What about grandparents? They're bonded to yeah, my grandparents. They're bonded to the entire family. They they pretty much you know I would say they miss anybody that they're not with. You know they they're bonded. They half the time they were with Meg's parents, Sarah, in the mornings and came to my uh, parents in the afternoon. I know on one of the boat rides during reconciliation in July, we took my parents' boat out on the lake. Just the boys, I would pick up Meg and the boys, and just us went out the whole time on the boat. Uh, Asher was asking if we can go see grandma. I'm gonna object as anything the children are saying. It's not for right. the, the matter asserted. Well, we'll sustain it anyway. Um. Wait, there's some inference is when Ms. Pace always questioning your mom that she takes care of the kids rather than you when you, the two of you are together. Is that accurate? It's not accurate at all. I do all the cooking, cleaning, bathing, diapers. I do all of it 99.9% .9 of the time. You know, sometimes Ashley wants my mom to put on shoes or something like that. But I do agree. I have my parents over there a lot. I used to see the kids every single day. I want to be able to let them maintain that relationship. I don't, you know, I'm doing what I can for the boys to be able to maintain the relationships that they previously established with the amount of time that I have. I'm doing the best that I can and also obviously having quality time just with me and the boys. When you and Ms. Wenzel lived together, who primarily got the children up for uh, out of bed and ready for the day? Uh, Sarah and her father. And, and why is that? They, Sarah and her father were oftentimes at the house, entering the house, getting the boys ready before Meg was even out of bed. They would come in, they would go straight to the rooms, get them ready. This, this was even before Asher and Sam, they did the same thing with Noah. Um, they were the ones that came in and I, and I offered at times, or I ended up offering, I'm like, listen, I can get the boys ready. It's just, I normally leave at 6 a.m. So if I get the boys ready for the day, you know, they're already up, I'm waking up the house early. And she said, oh, don't worry about it. Sarah likes doing that anyways. And I, you know, so. If, if you had the kids on a 50-50 basis, would you be able to um, either have somebody come over and, and get them up so they wouldn't have to get up so early? Or what, what would your provision be for them? I think be, yeah, my mom would be able to come over to the house and just be there before I left. And then the boys would be able to sleep until an appropriate time. Do you uh, like the fact that the children are currently in childcare? I don't. What would you prefer? That they be with family. Do you believe that you have the capacity um, to give the children love, affection, and guidance and to continue raising them in a religion? I do. And, you know, the most important thing for me is that they have a, the presence of God in their family, regardless of the denomination. And I'm not going to sit here and, you know, tell, you know, her whether what church this go to. The fact that they have God and that relationship with, you know, Jesus in their life, I, that's what matters most to me, regardless of the denomination. And did, did Ms. Wenzel ever object to going to church with, with your mom at her church when you were together? No, we went to Woodland a handful of times. Noah absolutely loved going to religious education at Woodland because a lot of his friends also attended there. It's the place that they first attended, or at least Asher first attended religious education at Woodland. Um, it's, it's not to say that we never went to St. Joe, but we went to both churches a handful of times. And do, how often do you take the kids to church? Now or then? Now. Now we go every Sunday. They've been every Sunday that they've not been sick or the, there's a weekend that we took uh, Asher up north for his birthday. Uh, they've attended every other Sunday. And, and do you have any disagreement with the children going to St. Joe's when, when they're with their mom? No, I don't. And do you believe that she's taking them every Sunday, that she has them? I, I would have no reason not to believe that. Do you have the ability to provide the children with their basic necessities like food? Absolutely. Clothing? Absolutely. There's been some testimony that your mom's provided clothing for the children, that your sister's provided clothing for the children. Do, do, can you can you provide them clothing without their help? I have provided a ton of clothing. I can certainly do it without their help. They just enjoy it.
do I have the ability? That's correct, yes. Is there anything that the children would need but wouldn't, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to provide at your home? No. Do you believe that Ms. Wenzel has the ability to provide the children with their basic material needs? I do. When, when you were together, who primarily made doctor's appointments for the kids? She did. And who primarily took them to doctor's appointments? So we, she did, and it was for, you know, it was the most logical and rational um, way of doing it. So, you know, it could have either been me taking a full day off of work where I work in between Schoolcraft and South Bend, or she would always tell me about how much PTO time she has saved up so she'd be able to take two hours. She's right next to the kids and right next to the doctor's office, so it always made the most sense that she was able to do it. It's not saying that I can't do it, but as a family unit, a family, you know, it, it would be, it would lack any sort of logic or rational thought to do it any other way. And do you believe that if you had the children half the time that you'd be able to take them to doctor's appointments when you needed to? I would be able to do it now. We actually just got a week of, you know, uh, time that we'd be able to use. Um, for those appointments. Does Ms. Wenzel inform you when the children have doctors, children have doctors' appointments? It's gotten better. Originally, not so much, but it, it definitely gotten better. Okay. And, and what was going on originally? I, I just don't believe that the, the notifications. I, I have to double check. I can't, I can't say for certain. But I just feel like it's gotten better from what it originally was. Did you tell her when you took the kids to urgent care? So we have been in communication all weekend. Um, I let her know. I, I have to recollect a little bit on how many messages I sent her and when I sent them. But I know I sent her messages. I know I woke up and I took a video of the boys. They were feeling better. So I'm like, hey, boys, you want to send a video to your mom just, you know, saying I love you and basically show her that you're feeling better. And so I took you know, a short little video after I said I love you, Sam. You know, they were they were uh, energetic and they looked like they were coming around. So I sent that to her and she responded. Hey, boys, glad you're feeling better. Um, and then I believe it was. I can't remember exactly when, but at some point I contacted Meg and let her know that I was concerned about Sam's eyes. I was like, he, he woke up, there was crusties in his eyes, but his eyes aren't red. I'm just concerned that, you know, there's an infection on the backside of his eye. I don't know. Um, that, I believe that was at night sometime, and she asked me to send her a picture of his eyes. So I did. I sent her a picture. She, she, I don't even believe she responded uh, to the picture, which to me indicated that she was not concerned. Um, and then the very next morning, uh, we went and I forgot. We woke up, Sam's eyes were crusty. I don't know where we ran to, but I, I could just tell by Sam's eyes and the way he was acting that I, I, I wanted to get him checked out. I was concerned. So at that very moment, my primary concern was what is going on with my son's eyes. So I left where we were going. I went straight to urgent care. I walked up to the counter. The first thing they ask is verification of phone numbers and this and that, and whether or not you want your um, this appointment to basically send to your primary provider. I agreed to all that. I verified her number. I verified my number. I agreed to have it submitted to the primary care provider. I knew that that was going to trigger a, a text message. And, you know, I knew she was going to get notified. So we we uh, went to the appointment. At some point in the middle of the appointment, she texted me about. Why am I getting a message about the boys being in the emergency room? And I said, the boys are not in the emergency room. I don't classify that the same thing as urgent care. But yes, we are here. I'm getting at, or Sam's eyes checked out. And I figured that while I'm here, I'm also going to get Asher checked out just to be certain. We're already here. Let's get a look at that. Um, and that's why I told her. Um, uh, then, yeah, we load it up. Upon walking outside, I see, you know, Sarah pull around. She takes a right down Columbia. We leave. We load the boys up. We leave. I'm with my mom at the time. We drive back to my house. I grab the boys, get them inside. My mom takes off to go get the prescription. And, yeah. So... When you um when you had the kids for spring break, your mom testified that there were some issues with Asher that he needed to have some um he was having some constipation issues. That's correct. Did you and Ms. Wenzel communicate well about how to take care of him? No, so she tried to communicate with me uh regarding I, I remember her details not being clear. So I tried to reach out to the primary care or actually I got on a Bronson My Chart and there was nothing on Bronson My Chart of like a care plan or what to give them. And nothing made sense. And so when I went and got the Miralax and you read the back of the Miralax and it says like the do not give more than this. And then I'm reading what she's telling me. I'm like, nothing adds up, but I have nothing from a doctor to go off of what to give them. So eventually when I did get in contact with the primary care provider to send me, um, I'm trying to think how it went. So it was like, I got in contact with the primary care provider to have me send or have them send me basically instructions of what to do next. And she sent me something basically that said, if you see loose stools, to give your son or to give your child this amount of Miralax. Wow. And so I was like, okay, I'm seeing Miralax or I'm seeing loose stools. I'm gonna give him this amount of Miralax. So I started doing that. That, that was just that one day. That was like Tuesday or Wednesday. And then I had Asher, I, I, I had Asher FaceTime Meg just to say, hey, check in, you know, just to have him have a visit with Meg over FaceTime while we're going. Asher had mentioned how he was doing good with his medicine, but like the dosage changed. He said something that triggered Meg to say, oh, we're not quite there yet. Jake, we'll talk about that, you know, later. I, I forget exactly the words used, but the, in, in our show, that's what happened. So after that FaceTime, um, she reached out and said, we're not quite there yet. You need to continue with, you know, the same regimen. I said, okay, can you provide that to me in any kind of documentation from a doctor? She said, no, you know, couldn't provide it. And I'm like, it doesn't make sense. I've never been to a doctor where they don't, there's not a documented like treatment plan. It made no sense. So she couldn't provide it. It wasn't on Bronson my chart. So once I finally, she reached out to the doctor the next morning, once I finally received that information from the doctor, I continued then with that regimen as well. I followed the care plan to how it was presented to me. And was Asher okay? Asher was okay. He ended up having like 36 loose stools during that week. I mean, the doctor said, you know, the big mass had pretty much been, like, everything was going great upon the checkup. Okay. Well, when you had the kids for the week, did you have any problems with Sam uh, wanting to nurse or missing uh, breastfeeding? No. Did you have, did you ever have any issues with the children uh, not wanting to sleep in the home and <laughs> getting them to bed? No, they both fall asleep with ease. They yeah, we read and they pretty much fall asleep on each of my shoulders. And do they sleep with you or do they sleep in their beds? They sleep in their beds, but I fall, you know, I'm in there when they fall asleep and then I go to my bed. Okay. Do 
Do you, do you envision myself agree on where, what school system you'd like the children to attend? No, she reached out to me and said that she would like them to attend St. Joe. And I told her that I'd just prefer to be in a public school system and that I think the one that makes the most sense is Lakeview since it's the one that's closest and most convenient for us. Is that the one that's in your school district? Or, do you live in that school district? That's correct. And does, does Ms. Wenzel also live in that school district? That's correct. Uh, there was a, a question about open wounds on Asher's legs from a walker. Do you know anything about that? I, I don't. Do you remember any, you don't remember any open wounds when he was little? I don't, I remember he, I mean, had a lot of diaper rash when he was little, um, but I don't remember open wounds, no. Do you, in, in, in Ms. Wenzel's answer to our motion for temporary custody, she alleged that you refused to contribute financially uh, as an equal partner or co-partner. Do you agree with that? I don't agree with that at all. Like I said, I've made out 24 checks to her totaling over $25,000. I, I rest assured that I've spent, I at least paid for 75% of the utilities during that time. I, uh, you know, I have all the check numbers that would go to her. So if we would like to deep dive into that, I would be more than willing. But my first check was written in June 3rd of 2020, last one in December of 2022. I also paid, you know, pretty much any time we went out anywhere. I paid for everything. Meg never had to spend a dime. She even has made comments to me that it's weird when the guy doesn't pay for dinner. So anytime we went out to dinner, I was typically paying. I don't say it was 100% of the time, but it was definitely a large portion of the time. Did, the, the, it just, did, did you buy anything when the kids were, were um, when, when she was pregnant with the kids and, and you were preparing to have children? Yeah, I, I bought all types of the baby changing pad. I mean, I, could, I have an entire Amazon list of stuff that I bought for the kids. Ms. Wenzel's alleged that you become easily overwhelmed with the children. Would you agree with that? I don't agree with that. I would agree with the fact that uh, Samuel never took a bottle. He never took a pacifier. So when, when Samuel was very, very young and Meg would leave the house and Sam would start crying, I had some choices. I mean, do I, I, yes, I texted her and I was like, hey, Sam is crying. Just, you know, head, heads up. You know, he wants fed. He will not take a bottle. He has never taken a bottle a day in his you know, baby life. He had never taken a pacifier. He'll spit it out immediately. So if I wouldn't have reached out to Meg and texted her that Sam was crying, I'd, I'd probably be here today saying that I, I didn't relate to, you know, Meg that, you know, our baby's needs. You know, it, it was lose-lose, I guess. Do you anticipate um, staying in your current residence? I do anticipate staying. Um, do you think it's a stable, satisfactory environment for your children? I do. And have the kids adjusted to your home? They have. They, you know, we can be out somewhere fun. Like, yeah, can we go home? They're ready to go home. There's, we have such a fun time. We do everything. Are you currently dating anyone? I am not. Do you have any plans to change your family unit? I do not. Any plans to move anyone into your house? I do not. Do you have any personal knowledge as to whether Ms. Wenzel is dating? I, the only clue that might be, I know at one of ten, or, uh, Asher's tennis practices, Sam ran over to say hi. And some guy named Rob was trying to FaceTime her. And when she saw it, she tried to like quickly tap out of it. So I don't know who he is. He's not family. So I know I don't, many guys don't FaceTime females to be friends, but that would be an assumption. Um, and then the other time that might be is when Asher FaceTimed her at my house uh, on spring break. Asher asked, Mom, are you alone? Yeah. And I don't, oh, sorry. All right, never mind. Yeah. Um, to the best, best of your knowledge, you should reside with anybody other than the children? To the best of my knowledge. And currently, do you feel like like your extended family is part of your, your family unit? Like cousins and grandma and grandpa and aunts and uncles? Grandma, grandma, aunts and uncles, you know, I try to, like I said, I try to maintain the relationships that the boys have established. It, you know, time is limited, so eventually I would like the boys to be able to, you know, create more of a, a relationship with their more distant cousins. Um, it's just, I do the best that I can with the time I'm allotted. Have the kids enjoyed seeing their cousins and playing with them? Absolutely. Asher calls Aniston one of his best friends. Do you have any um, criminal convictions? I've got a speeding ticket, I believe, in my name my entire life. Do you know if, if uh, Ms. Wenzel has any criminal conviction, convictions? I don't know. Um, do you uh, have... I think we covered everything about that. Uh, do, you have, do you have any concerns about Ms. Wenzel's moral fitness to raise the children? Mm, no. Do you have any mental health problems that would prohibit you from caring for the children? No. Do you have any physical health problems that would prevent you from caring for the children? No. Have you gone to counseling? I have. And who did you go to counseling with? Margaret. If you're listening, Margaret. Go. Is it Hunter? Margaret Hunter, that's correct. And how many sessions did you go to? Two or three. And why did you go there? I just needed, I, like, I've always been very good at, you know, kind of self-reflecting and being able to process my thoughts and emotions by myself, you know, in the military. It's just, you know, when you're deployed, you kind of care for yourself in that way. So I've always been good with that. This is just kind of weighed on me a little bit more. So it was just somewhere to go that I could speak what I was feeling and kind of get that release, um, in which the effect was effective, I would say. I felt better after it. Were you uh, prescribed any medication for mental health purposes? No. Do you take any medication for any physical health problems? No. Do you know if Ms. Wenzel has any diagnosed mental health problems that would prevent her from caring for the children? I'm not aware of any diagnosed, but besides the migraines, I, I guess you had a treatment plan for that if that's considered, but otherwise, no. Did she take medications for the migraines? She did, yes. Has Ms. Wenzel requested that you attend co-parenting counseling? She has. And have you agreed to that? I, I did with conditions. And what were your conditions? My conditions were that the files would be closed so that they couldn't be presented here today. And my reasoning for doing that was because she had sh she has shown absolutely zero indication that she's willing to be an effective co-parent. She can't be a pickup. She can't be a drop-off. She She's done nothing but try and limit my time to the very last second to the where I don't get to see the boys for a second longer than what's currently court ordered. She has shown zero signs that she wants to become a better co-parent. So my thought process was that if the records were sealed and they couldn't be brought here today, that would let me know that her going to counseling for co-parenting was genuine in the sense of becoming better co-parents for our children. And if, and if she wasn't willing to do that, and, and I felt like that I was correct, that her true intentions were to go in there and you know tell the therapist the same thing. She's trying to come in here today to try and get her to rubber stamp them to give them more of credibility. Currently, your children are too young to go to kindergarten. Correct. But you've talked about a lot of activities that they have. Correct. Um, there's been, what, tennis? Is that accurate? Tennis, correct. Uh, soccer? Correct. Gymnastics? Correct. Have you and Ms. Wenzel been able to agree on all of these activities? No, so I had also paid for Asher's floor hockey season. I had prepaid for it in hopes that he would be able to do it. Um, he was not allowed to do it. The boys have not been allowed to participate in any activity or function that does not land on my time. I, the, Asher would still be doing tennis today on Wednesdays, 
if she would have had made available Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday, I could have scheduled practices on any of those days. She has continued to refuse to do and allow anything outside of my current court order time. And I obviously don't believe that's in the best interest of the boys. It's in the best interest of her desires of removing me. And is it important to you to coach? Absolutely. My, I grew up, my dad coached me in all my stuff until, you know, eighth grade. I told, I promised Asher that I would be his coach and all these different things. I've already been, you know, in the yard since he was very young, hitting baseballs, playing hockey. To, like, I've been doing everything with him for years. And I promised him that I would be his coach, uh, just like my dad was for me. And has he had fun? Absolutely. Have you disagreed about gymnastics? We have disagreed about gymnastics. She had pulled him out of not only gymnastics early, she had prepaid for November and pulled him out in October. She, we had, you know, signed up for soccer. She pulled him out of soccer early. And then, so yeah, we've had any disagreement. We've had pretty much all disagreements regarding our activities. Do you like to attend the kids' activities? Absolutely. Um, do you feel that Ms. Wenzel has been inclusive in, in making that decision, those decisions about activities with you? Um, she's been present for them. I wouldn't call it inclusive because, you know, it's what she wants. So what she wanted was, you know, instead of me coaching Asher in soccer in Wiles Park five minutes from our house, she thought the best thing to do would be to drive an hour round trip to Kalamazoo to continue to do a, a uh, sports camp instead of Asher being a part of a soccer team that his dad was coaching. It, it just didn't make any sense, but she wanted to do it because, um, yeah. Do you want to be involved in uh, parent-teacher conferences? Not only do I, I currently am. Yeah. Are there parent-teacher conferences in preschool? Yes, I've had parent-teacher conferences with uh, Asher. Do you believe that you're able to facilitate and encourage a close and continuing relationship between the boys and their mom? As hard as it feels sometimes, Meg will always be the mother of my children, and I would never, and I have consistently, to this day, I have tried to foster that relationship. I have invited her out swimming. I have invited her over to the house. I've invited her to multiple activities to include bringing Noah with her, and she has repeatedly denied and refused any of that, and that's fine, but I, I will continue to try and, you know, improve the co-parenting relationship has as she, best as I can. Has she made uh, any overtures towards you to uh, attend activities or events with the kids outside of regular parenting time? Sorry, say that one more time. She made any, she invited you to do anything with, with her and the boys. There was one time way back when she messaged me at like six o'clock at night, was like, hey, we're going to ice hockey or going to ice hockey in the morning. I was unable to see that notification in time. I reached out to her and let her know that um, that I missed the notification um, and that I would definitely love to do that. I hope to do that in the future. You know, it was a one time deal six months ago. I have a hard time believing that was what Meg wanted to do. I feel like that was advice, but that's also opinion. Do you, do you think that if uh, Ms. Wenzel was more involved in exchanging the children rather than having her, her sister do it, that that would help facilitate a better relationship? Of course, it would eliminate half of our disagreements. And, you know, a lot of these things that we're disagreeing on a, a texting app is a five-second statement or a 10-second conversation that we could have at the cover drop-off. Like, has Asher had his mirror likes yet? Like, we're, we're having to text these things back and forth, or just a lot of the little things that we're disagreeing about, just be present for your kids. Can you have those conversations with Sarah? It, it just creates, like, a middle party of, like, he said, she said, you know, I, I told Sarah this, but she relayed this, and it just, it's confusing, it's, it makes things difficult. Do you believe that Sarah's ever followed you? A thousand percent, and I believe that even more now, knowing that you know you're telling my parents that they leave thirty minutes prior to arrival. How do they know that information? Camp out. Have you had any domestic violence in your relationship? I do not. Um, do, do you even raise your voice? No. Have has there been any verbal abuse in your relationship? Not in our relationship, but I feel like the, the verbal abuse came on Easter Sunday or Easter at Asher's uh, Asher's Easter function at his school. There was a Asher was crying. Meg picked him up, went over and sat down. I seen Asher was crying. I walked over. I said, "What's going on, buddy?" She said, Jake, you need to stop this before you cause more emotional trauma. Mind you, we're surrounded by a ton of parents, other kids. Like, this isn't, this isn't a private, private you know, setting. And I said, Meg, I don't know what's going on right now, but this is not the time or place for this. If you'd like to sit down sometime and talk, we can definitely do that. She stood up. She pointed at me and said, you need to stop listening to your parents. You need to do what's best for your family. And why don't you be a man for once in your life? And pointed at me, turn around and walk out with Asher, holding him the entire time. Ms. Wenzel alleged in her answer to our motion for temporary custody that you've been verbally and emotionally abusive to her. Do you have any idea what, what that's about? I have no idea. Do you feel like she's, other than that example of the Easter um, event, do you think she's been emotionally or verbally abusive to you? I've never viewed it as that. So I never viewed it as that when I was in the situation. Like I've never, you know, characterized the way or what someone says to me as either manipulative or verbal or psychological abuse. I've just always kind of dealt with it and processed it. But now, after the fact and talking to counselors and therapists who are more specialized in, you know, recognizing that stuff, say that I have and reflecting on our relationship, I would characterize there as being some verbal and psychological abuse. Sure. Um, the court can consider other other issues that are not like enumerated in the best interest factors. One issue that came up in the answer to the motion for temporary custody was your possession of firearms. Do you have firearms? I do. Uh, do you have long guns or handguns? I've got a uh, I've got a shotgun and two handguns. And how do you store your firearms? I've got trigger locks. Um, so I've got a trigger lock on my handgun that I can still carry. I've got a tr I've got trigger locks on everything. I got my shotgun and a, a gun case that's locked and kept in a closet that's locked because I don't ever use it uh, with that pistol in there as well. And then the, the pistol that I can still carry, I have a, a trigger lock on. And I had the same one at uh, when I was at Meg's residence when it was in the nightstand with the trigger lock. I never had one in the chamber. She knew the combination to the trigger lock. Um, yeah, we both went and got our CPLs together. Yeah. So you've had CPL training? Yeah, we both attended the CPL class together, both got our CPL licenses, licenses together, as well as my, all my training from the military. I'm a, you know, certified, um, I've got a marksman ribbon uh, for small arms expert. And when, when you were together, did Ms. Wenzel ever express concern over the way you stored firearms? Never, and, but there was a lot of times that she liked to know I had it on me. When she heard noises in the middle of the night, she asked me, you know, is your gun close? There was zero concern ever regarding the firearms. Was there ever time either during your relationship or after you separated that she requested your assistance involving a firearm? Yeah, so she texted me at 1.30 in the morning after a night that she kicked me out. Hey, you awake? It woke me up. I texted back. Hey, you know, what's going on or something? She calls me, says that the alarm's going off. She thinks someone's in the house or in the garage. So 
you know, see a, a print. But yeah, so I grabbed my firearm. I knew where it was. Took off. I was there within ten minutes. You know, I cleared the garage, cleared the house. Um, Did she ever express any fear of, of you with, with with your use of firearms? Absolutely. Not. If if you were to have fifty fifty custody, who would would you be fine with Megan being the first one that you would call if you had to work overtime or you had a, a call that you had to go in on? Again, in a perfect world, I would love you know a co-parenting relationship that we would be each other's first call it's just i feel like we're at least she's miles away from that but in an ideal world i would love that relationship to where we are each other's first call when we when we need someone to watch the kids absolutely why why do you think it's in, in your children's best interest for you to share custody on an equal basis because i think that they, they have a loving mother and a loving father and i think we both provide something to their life that kids need you know kids need their father just as much as they need their mother and just for different reasons and it, you know the, the balance creates a great childhood and you know we provide different things for children mother and father do and our kids have are lucky enough to have great parents i have no further questions Okay. Right. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Smith, let's start with what you just indicated that both parents can bring something to the table for the children. That's what you said, right? Yes. Okay. And in order to do that, you have to have 50 50 parenting time? I guess any amount of time would be a. It, the more time that a parent has with their child, the more that the child is able to learn and grow from that parent. So, quality parenting time is technically more important than quantity parenting time. Is that correct? It's quality parenting time is more important than quantity. And then the number, the number of overnights. No, because I think the full spectrum of the day, whether nighttime, daytime, it's all important. The, the, I would disagree with that characterization. Even if you're not available through all that time? I'm, I'm available an equal amount as the mother is. You work from home? I don't. Okay. When the kids' school calls because they're sick and you're in South Bend, you can access them faster than Megan? I personally can't, but I would be able to make a phone call with someone that could access them just as quick as Megan Shore. You'd call your mom, right? I would call whoever's available. Would you call Megan? Again, in a perfect world, when we could actually have a good co-parenting relationship, I would 100% call Megan. You keep saying this perfect, perfect world. Didn't you try and get back with Miss Wenzel within the last two months to get into a relationship with her? I, I tried to open the door to us becoming better, whatever that would be. You know, I opened the door to us just improving our relationship, whether that improved it as parents or if some miracle it was something else. I'm, I'm not, I don't close the door to any situation in my life, no. Okay. So if there was a possibility that you were going to get back together in a relationship, that was something you were open to. Is that correct? If all, if everything made sense and the changes were made, and I, I, like I said, I don't close the door to anything, but I do feel like we're, we're a ways away. We're a long ways away from anything like that, but I would never close the door on, any such, in, on anything. Okay. No, the reason I'm asking because listening to you testify for the last hour and a half, I'm not sure I'd want to be in a relationship with Ms. Wenzel because it sounded awful. Is that true? Ms. Pagenaud, was that a question? Yeah. Okay. I, would, I guess it would sound just as awful as wanting to marry a, a guy that's been painted in this motion as well. I guess it's kind of equally as, I guess we're awful, awfully perfect. Isn't it more fair that you guys actually had some ups and downs in a relationship like some normal people do? I would say we had high highs and low lows for sure. Okay. Let's talk about spring break for a minute. Okay. We heard you testify, your mom testified, you took the kids to Great Wolf Lodge, correct? Correct. And then you took them to the Children's Museum in Chicago. Correct. Okay. And um, that there was a change in plans prior to the trip, correct? Not prior to the trip. During the trip, did you make change plans? So the Great Wolf Lodge was always the plan. That was always the same. The only thing that had changed the plans was the fact that uh, the aquarium was sold out. I didn't anticipate that, so that's why we ended up having to go to the, the Chicago Music Children's Museum. And then the fact that instead of going to Ann Arbor, um, I decided to come home so that Asher could make it to his school uh, events Saturday morning. Okay. On page two of your answer to the motion for denial of parenting time, number seven, you admit that you took the kids to Great Wolf Lodge, but yeah. you answered that you took them to St. Joseph, Michigan, to a children's museum and other activities. So, yeah, we stayed in St. Joe, but we, we went to the museum, whether it's I'm just, I don't know exactly the location of the museum, but we stayed in St. Joe, yes. In St. Joe, Michigan. That's correct. Okay. And then you drove to Great Wolf Lodge for a couple of days, but then when you stayed in St. Joe, you then drove back into Chicago to take him to the Children's Museum? Well, so we stayed in Great Wolf Lodge Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Okay. Then we went, woke up on Thursday and went to the Children's Museum, stayed the night in St. Joe, and did activities around St. Joe Friday morning. Okay. At what point did you tell Miss Wenzel that you were going to Chicago? I told her that we were going three hours away to Great Wolf Lodge. It's become apparent that I, I'm almost afraid to tell her exact locations because they seem to show up everywhere that I am. Okay. So you kind of like were trying to trick her so she didn't know exactly where you were? There's not a trick. I told her I was three hours away at Great Wolf Lodge. I, there's no trick involved. There's an assumption, I guess, of where... Okay. You don't think it's important for her to know for emergency purposes that the children were outside of the state of Michigan? I kept in contact with her throughout. Did. That didn't answer my question. Is it... Yeah, I think it's important to keep in contact with Meg in case of emergencies. I do. But if you're out of state, would you want would you want to be made aware that Meg took the kids out of state for emergency purposes? I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm confused of what a state line. For I mean, if I'm, I, I try to do my best to let Meg know. I wish I could let her exactly know where I am, but I honestly I don't feel comfortable letting her know exact locations anymore because they they're behind us every time we turn around. Every time you turn around, they're behind you. That's just that's what it feels like when you know they know exactly when your parents are leaving your house and they're at the same urgent care that you're at and following like it. it so, it Mr. Like Smith, it, Mr. Smith, you live on a busy road, correct? It is pretty busy. Okay, what road do you live on? 
south of Vista Boulevard. Okay. And how far does Meg live from you? It's about a five to five or seven minute drive. Okay. And how far does Sarah live from you? Just just beyond Meg, one street down. Okay. Is it fair to say that it's not like they're going out of their way to come past your residence? It would be uh, it would be out of the, I mean to go where like uh, Columbia Avenue is a is the main road, but it's turned down the Vista Boulevard to go. Uh, Can you say your house you, from Columbia Road? Yes, but to do it consistently is enough that to know that they leave my house thirty minutes before pickup every single day seems like a pretty consistent routine. Does your mom leave thirty minutes before every pickup? I mean, they, she definitely leaves before pickup the amount of time. I don't know. We try to provide, you know, my, I try to provide my mom and dad a, a fair amount of time, and you know, she does try to be gone before pickup, but it's not like a set time. No. How do the exchanges go with Sarah? I mean, they're okay for the most part. I, I don't understand the way she does pickups. For instance, like I have a wide open driveway, but yet we choose to park on the side of a busy road to load the kids up instead of just going in my driveway and loading the kids up where it's not only closer to the door but it's safer. So besides that, um, I would say pickups are okay. They're, they don't. I don't have any real issue. How about drop offs? How do the drop offs go? Do those go good too? Pickups and drop offs look the same. It does. There's no problems with the kids aren't emotional or anything at the exchanges. So that's a yes or no question, by the way. Are they emotional at the exchanges? Instances, yes. And that's mostly coming from Sarah to you, correct? Twice, yes. It only happened twice. Yes. And was that Asher or Samuel? Asher. These events that you were signing the children up, such as tennis and soccer, do you and actually you said some other thing, what other that you weren't able to do because you prepaid. Hockey. What event did you prepay? Hockey. Did you consult with Meg before you prepaid hockey? I did. Okay. And she but said no before you prepaid or after you prepaid? So I, I'm not sure. I, I know I consulted with Meg at least twice on it. it. The one time it took a long time for her to get back to me, and I wanted to make sure that that league did not fill up. So I went ahead and prepaid. And I'm like, whether or not he's able to do it or not, I'll be out, you know, the 40 bucks, but at least he's able to be in it. If he's able, you know, if she says yes, at least he's got a spot. When was that? Oh, that was early. That was maybe a hockey November, December. 2023? Correct. Okay. Did they do hockey prior to November, or December, 2023? This was the first uh, age group that they could have. I mean, we played hockey at the house, but nothing organized now. So tennis was on Thursdays. Is that correct? Wednesdays. Sorry, Wednesdays. That's correct. Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. And you wanted to coach the soccer team, correct? Correct. So you are doing practices on Wednesdays. Correct. But in reality, didn't Megan offer for you to do a one-on-one -on -one thing with Asher at Kingdom every Saturday? So you would have actually got an extra amount of time one-on-one -on -one with Asher? Yeah, but I'm thinking what's in the best interest of my child. And the best interest of my child is to, for him to learn and grow in a team environment, something that he's going to be doing the rest of his life instead of just like a mini camp in Kalamazoo. How old is Asher again? He's four. Okay. Think he has a concept of what a team is? He's he's learning one now. Okay. So you'd rather be in charge. How many kids are on the team? Ten. Okay. So you'd rather be in charge between five and ten of the kids rather than have a one-on-one -on -one with Asher? We're all on the field together. He's getting the full experience. Asher was so excited and like high-fiving me and everything. He had a blast being out there. Yeah, Dad, are you going to be my coach every week? Yes, buddy. I didn't ask what Asher said, and that's here saying. You indicated that you've suffered from emotional and verbal abuse and that counselors have indicated that to you. That now you, you understand that you could have been subject to that, correct? That's correct. Did Margaret Hunter tell you that? She, uh, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't believe, I can't remember the exact words. I know it was between her and Anta, you know, that basically I was a pool boy and that I, I, I honestly, I, between the two of them, I know it was mentioned. Okay. I don't recall. Those are the only two therapists that you saw? That is correct. Okay. When we go back to the spring break issue, did you and Meg follow the um, Asher school's break for Christmas break? Did we follow the school's break for Christmas break? That is correct, yes. Okay. And well, we that, was only, that was only one week, correct? I don't recall. Okay. And isn't it true that his preschool really didn't celebrate spring break? Is that correct? They, they acknowledge that the kids do spring break, but they also offered the, their services for kids that weren't able to go on spring break. So but they don't have a spring break. Is that correct? That, that is correct. They don't have spring break. When did you notify Meg that you were going to exercise spring break of 2024? I mean, I guess I'm new to the whole parenting order. I didn't realize that I had to be the one to notify Meg of what the court order says in regards to who gets spring break. I, you know, for me, I read, I see that Meg has this holiday. I don't need her to tell me that, but I did notify her at least a little bit in advance that we would be going on spring break. I can't tell you an exact number of days or, but. Isn't it true that Meg was expecting the kids back that Sunday after your weekend? I'm sure that's what she would have liked. It's because you didn't notify her that you were keeping them for that 10 days until that Friday after you picked them up. Is that correct? I, I just let her know what the court order said. Okay. But Asher School doesn't celebrate, didn't celebrate spring break, correct? Yeah, they took, I, from my understanding, it follows the district that you live in when that occurs. Does your order say that? Specifically? I would have to double check, but I, I thought it did, yes. Okay. You indicated you want the children to go to a public school and that be in Lakeview. Is that correct? That's correct. If Meg was willing to pay 100% of the tuition to go to St. Joe, would you agree that they could go to the private school? Uh, it's not something that I would be, I'm not going to take a firm stance on it now. I would want to do some research before I make a decision like that. It wasn't something that you guys had talked about previously? Absolutely not.
let's go to this Miralax incident when you said that Meg didn't um, notify you of what was going on. Do you read the Our Family Wizard? I do. Do you read it every day? Try to. There's times you go a couple days without reading it, though. Is that correct? I mean, we both have, absolutely. Okay, I'm asking about you. Yes. Okay. And she actually outlined what the doctor had told her about the Miralax, correct? So, yes, yeah, she tried to tell me what a doctor was telling her without any sort of doctor note. It's just something that I have never seen, so yes, I doubted it. Okay. And then she actually called the doctor and got you a letter so you would believe it. Is that correct? Y yes. One was finally uploaded to Bronson my chart. Once, you know, I seen something from an actual doctor on documentation. I followed it. Yes. Do you think that Meg would purposely try and harm her child by giving her Miralax? I've never heard of a verbal... I've never heard of a doctor giving a verbal treatment care plan without it being written in paper. So I, I did, I, I was, I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't concerned when you read the back of a Miralax bottle and it's saying something completely different. I wasn't Meg primarily responsible for the kids' medical care during your relationship? She was. Did you question her during your relationship about caring for the kids and what a doctor would say? No. Would she come home and show you a paper or would she just tell you what the doctor would say? She would tell me. Okay. So this time was different. The circumstances are also different. Okay. I'm going to ask you again, you think she would tell you something to potentially harm the child? I mean, I, I, at this point, I wouldn't put it against her because she's tried to also, when Asher... I mean, there's no other question in front of you, but thank you. <laughs> and same, did you tell her that it wasn't needed? That you weren't going to give Asher the Miralax because you didn't think it was needed? I, I don't remember that. I have to see that. I don't remember ever saying that. Okay. You indicated that Meg hasn't offered you any additional time. There was the one hockey incident and since the creation of the order, unless I'm refreshed out a different incident. And that wasn't the next day. It was actually a week. She had given you a week's notice, didn't she? For the, the ice skating? Ice skating, yeah. Absolutely not. Okay. Hasn't she offered you to come over and use the basketball hoop with the boys because the boys like to play basketball? That was at the very, very beginning, I guess. But that was also, that was during my time. Like, I, that wasn't like, come over whenever you want and play basketball with the boys. Absolutely. That was not the, the context in which she told me I could come use it. Because when you have the boys, you can come over and bring them back to me and play basketball in the house. Let's go to this urgent care. I just want to clarify. Did Meg tell you over the weekend that she believed the kids had pink eye? Did Meg tell me over the weekend that she believed the boys had pink eye? Yeah. Before not, you took them to urgent care? Not before, no. Okay. So that wouldn't be in our family wizard? I, I don't remember that. I, like I said, I sent her pictures of the eye. I had concerns over the eye. I, I don't remember a response from her after I sent the picture to the time I took them to urgent care. I don't remember a response. Okay. So now, it, I just want to clarify. You relied on the fact that you thought Bronson would text her that they would she had the urgent care rather than you call them, call her and tell her you were at urgent care? No, I knew they would. I, I would have definitely let Meg know. But in that moment, my primary concern was, the, you know, my children and their and their health. As soon as I got figured out what was going on and, you know, that appointment's over, I'm going to let Meg, hey, Meg, this is, you know, I took the boys in. This is what it was. It wasn't an emergency to the point where, like, you know, we're talking about a lamb or stitches. Right? The boys were sick and I wanted to know what was going on. And I would have certainly let her know about it like I always have. There's never been a time where I tried to hide an, you know, an illness. I, I would let her know. It just wasn't going to be in the very middle of the appointment while the doctor's in in the office. Why did you call her on the way and say, hey, I'm running the kids to urgent care? Like I said, my, my focus at that time is I thought there was something definitely wrong with Sam's eyes. I wanted to get it figured out. That was my number one concern. This Miralex thing you said that you testified that the doctor said things were better at the follow-up checkup? That's correct. Did you attend that appointment? No, but I called and had a uh, uh, over-the-phone consultation with his doctor regarding that appointment. Okay. Did Meg put on our family wizard the results of that appointment? Maybe after. Like, I, I knew the appointment was happening, so I was I was monitoring Bronson my chart, you know, right after the appointment. So when I, I pulled up the Bronson my chart, and then I immediately called, and I just wanted to hear from the doctor herself. The doctor was that available to talk to you right then? She, she called me, yes. Not not like that very second, but if the note was made and the doctor called me within, I don't know, four hours or so. Had Meg posted in Our Family Wizard within those four hours? I don't recall that. Possibly, but I don't recall that. That urgent care visit that you didn't notify Meg about, have you paid that bill? I have not. Has Meg asked you to pay the bill since you didn't notify her of the appointment? I, I just followed the order and it says that, you know, that I'm able to make those decisions to, to you know, seek treatment for the kids. And then there's a separate part of the order that of who is responsible for the payment of that. And I feel like I am paying it. It's just not directly for that. She's getting the money, you know, via. Oh, you yeah. wanted to pay it out of the child support. I mean, what? I, I pay for health insurance and what I, the money. I don't know. I, I'm just clarifying. You wanted to pay it out of the child support, correct? I just want the order to be followed. Whatever the order says is what I would have done. So what I would consider violating the order by not notifying her, you want her to pay for the appointment that you didn't notify her of. But that's, but I, I've read the order and the order states that I'm, that, that, the parent in which the child are with has the, you know, ability to make medical decisions in the best interest of the child or something along those lines. There's another one that states like, in, like, I, I, I'd have to read it again, but I know I've read that order multiple times. And that... At that hearing, did you have, or at the, sorry, at that urgent care, did you have the kids tested for COVID? After that? No, at that urgent care appointment, did you have the kids tested for COVID? I can't remember if they were tested for COVID. I know I didn't request them to be tested for COVID, but again, I can't recall if, if it was like a doctor recommended or if they... I don't remember. Regardless of who recommended it, were the kids tested for COVID? Again, I don't recall. I, like, I don't recall because I didn't request it. So if they were tested, it was because, yeah, I, I, all I know is I did not request a COVID test. I, I'm not 100% sure if they were given one. During that weekend, did you give Asher a prescription that wasn't prescribed to him? There was a prescription lubricant for eyes. And when I was at that doctor's office. Did you give him a prescription that wasn't prescribed to him? 
by okay of the doctor? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you give it to him prior or after you talked to the doctor? After. So what prescription would you have had to fill if you were using an old prescription or someone else's prescription? No, it it, it was the same lubricant that Sam had for his eyes was applied once to Asher's eyes. The eyelids, you put it on their eyelid. After the urgent care visit? Correct. Let's talk about your job for a minute. You're currently an assistant foreman? That's correct. Okay, and you said your position can change roughly two to three times a year? It, yeah, it's really hard to gauge, but I would say on average that sounds about right. Do you have my exhibit two in front of you? Can you pee? Oh. Sorry, pee, yes. Oh, yes. Can you turn to the second page of that exhibit? Yes, okay. To verify we're on the same page, can you, up at the top, does it say a pay date of 12-29 of 2023? Yes. Okay. Now. Go back to more of the left-hand side of the page. There's your earnings. Yeah. Correct? Yep, correct. Can you go to your year-to-date and tell me what your total year-to-date was for 2023? So I see earnings, year-to-date, total 25000 Is that what we're looking at? At the bottom of year-to-date? No, that's company paid benefits. you got to look up oh, sorry. total under year-to-date. Yeah, my apologies. Because, okay. The regular hours? No, no, wait. I see. The, the 110335 Okay. Correct. Yep. And that, that was the amount you received, including your overtime, uh, arbitrary match, general holidays, vacation, pay absence, right? Do you see that all above? Yeah, I'm just kind of reviewing it real quick here. Uh, okay. Yes, yep. Okay, but that 110,000 isn't reflected on your W-2, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, you indicated that you have some mandatory withholdings, and I can see your... Let me go back. How often do you get paid? Bi-weekly? Bi-weekly, that's correct. Okay, so I see your national medical cost of 154.61, correct? Correct. And who who is all covered under that insurance? Uh, myself and Asher and Sam. Okay, so the three of you, correct? Say that again. So just the three of you? Correct. Okay. Now, looking at that, you testified that you have three hundred and fifty dollars a month of um, mandatory withholdings. Depending on it, it changes, I guess, because some. It, I, I guess what I need to know is what are your mandatory withholdings besides your union dues? So the railroad retirement. So the the four hundred one k three hundred fifty two seventy eight. This is a, a different one. This is probably page one, I guess. But it's changes here. So this month it was two hundred ninety five sixty one. Okay. Are you required to? I'm just asking. Are you required to submit a certain percentage, or do you pick what percentage you want to do? I believe there is a baseline, and you can do more for them to match more. I do believe actually. So do you, do you know what the baseline is? I, uh, I, I don't, to be honest with you. Do you know how much you contribute? Not off the top of my head, I have to refresh my memory. No. Do you know if it's more than what the baseline is? I want to say I, I made it so that I could cap their max. If okay, I so, so it's more than their base, correct? Yes. Okay. But there's, yeah. There's also the railroad retirement disability. I mean, all those are obviously mandatory railroad uh, deductions as well. I, I, I'm looking at your page, I'm not sure what exactly are. Can you tell me what those are? So the, yeah, the railroad retirement board, tier one, tier two, and disability are all mandatory. 194, 153, 45, 39. I see those, but what are they mandatory for? They provide railroad, you know, services to railroads. So like if you uh, got laid off, you apply, or uh, short-term disability. So you get short-term disability from, I, I've never done it, so I can't think of the name, but then you also get your disability from this um, railroad board. So it basically gives you more money when you're on short-term disability. I've never had to use it myself, so I don't completely understand it, to be honest, but. Okay, no, just I understand all that. Different railroad employee services that are funded through those that are working, I don't know. Okay. Now, in regards to overtime, mm -hmm. how much overtime have you worked in 2024? Not a lot, I know that. Not a lot because child support spending or not a lot because you haven't been mandated? Uh, not a lot because I've denied a lot of calls just that maximize my time with the kids. Okay, so you're denying calls only on the times that you have kids? or That's correct. I have never denied a call when I do not have a kid that, or do not have my kids with me. That's correct. Okay. Now, in regards to 2023, I think I heard you testify that he um, that was a huge year for overtime. 2023? Yeah. I can't remember what the bigger year. 2023 or 2023 was a big year for overtime, yes. I, I would have to, what is year to date overtime? 207 hours. I can't remember if 2022 was more or not, but that, I mean, that is quite a bit. Okay. And isn't it, I mean, I guess since 2020, you routinely had a lot of overtime, is that correct? Or regularly had a lot of overtime? I regularly had quite a bit of overtime, yeah. Okay. Or um, is on-call paid different? Okay, so on-call is not paid different. The only thing that is different with my overtime than most companies is that we have a minimum amount of overtime that we get. So if my boss calls me and tells me to check my email and it takes me two minutes, I get paid two hours and 40 minutes of overtime. That is the minimum amount we can get paid to accomplish any work-related task. With that being said, if I get called down to South Bend for an emergency and that by the time I leave my house and go to that call and it takes 10 hours, I still am only getting 10 hours. Like that two hours and 40 minutes is not an addition to, it's just a minimum amount. Okay, I get that. Where's Asher go to school? Our world, St. Mark's. All right. And what days of the week is he there? He is there on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And do you know how much it costs for him to attend there? I've seen the number. I don't have it memorized, no. Do you pay anything towards that tuition? I, I, I thought it was a factor into the child support amount, but... You said you and Meg started dating in 2018, correct? That's correct. And you moved in together in January, or sorry, in 2018? Honestly, like, I don't recall. I know there was, you know, a period where we dated, a period where I would spend some nights there, some nights go home, and then it was finally like, are you staying here or are you not? And I don't remember what that date is, honestly. Was it 18, 19? Do you remember? Again, I don't, I honestly don't know. 
Okay. Did you pay any bill, bills, rent, utilities, or anything from 2018 to June of 2020? Associated with that residence. June of 18? I just said 18. Okay. July of 18. So no, I didn't pay anything from July of 18 to whatever, till June of... 2020? Correct. For utilities and rent? No. Okay. You think the reason for the breakup of you and Meg's relationship was solely because she was mad that you didn't have joint accounts? That was our very last conversation, yes. And that was all our last conversation revolved around, yes. Okay. In June of 2020 to December of 2022, at any point were you laid off? June of 2020? Yep, to December of 2022. At any point was I laid off? Yeah. The likely, yes. And do you recall when? Uh, it would have been sometime in the winter. That's when all the layoffs happened, so sometime during the winter season. Okay. Do you know how long you were laid off? Uh, if I had to guess, four months, but that's, that's kind of a month. Did you, get on, did you get unemployment during that time? I did for a short period of time. Okay. And you still paid 100% of the rent and 100% of the utilities when you were laid off? I did not. I think that's also why I said that it resulted in 26 out of 31 possible payments during that time period. So I would account for those five months probably is not included in that. Okay. Are you aware of how many? <clears throat> Just make a let me interrupt you. It's uh, now 4.45 and we have to have staff out of the building. And uh, so we're going to have to, at this point, adjourn until next Tuesday. And uh, we'll come back at the, uh, we'll come back on the 7th and uh, continue at that time. Wow. A whole lot of nothing testimony. <laughs> Okay, so we still have another part, maybe even two more parts. I haven't exactly looked yet, but I know that we haven't even heard mom testify yet. So the next video that's up will be a continuation of this trial. Thanks for watching.